السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله today we will uh, make a demonstration for uh, this pressure vessel which received from uh, your side uh, let's take a look for the pressure vessel dimensions and the arrangement uh, here if we uh, take a look uh, close for the uh, reference point of this pressure vessel you can figure that it uh, start from the right direction to the left direction it's a horizontal pressure vessel. Uh, and uh, if you uh, take a look for the uh, inside diameter of this vessel, it's uh, three meters inside diameter. Uh, the thickness for, for all uh, shell courses are equal with different lengths. We have different lengths here. We take a look for the longitudinal welding line orientations each uh, shell include a single welding line. So now let's uh, proceed creating, inshallah, this pressure vessel. Now from SEG software, let's create a new project. And from here, uh, you can select the uh, project name, seven. And from here, let's select the location of this project. Let's create it on the desktop. After that, you will be able to select the project module. You can select a horizontal pressure vessel module, or if you select overall module, you will get all features if required for the uh, other modules. Now let's click on finish to create the project folder. And here at the desktop, you will find uh, the uh, day seven folder. Yeah. And if we open it, you will find the project uh, sub files and folders. Here you will find the uh, SEG uh, project file, which include the project information uh, and three. Here the Autodesk Inventor IBJ file, which uh, define, uh, describe the location of the project and the workspace. Uh, uh, parts folder, simply for the folder and drawings folder. The old version folder, uh, it looks like the backup file for the AutoCAD. Now let's close this and come back to the project. And from here, uh, let's uh, name or make a rename for this vessel. So if you right click on the vessel and make a rename, you can give this vessel a name like send. Okay. And from here, if you open the setting tab and open the equipment tab, you will be able to define the equipment setting. The first thing we, we, we will need to define, which is the position of the equipment. This vessel is a horizontal vessel, so we will keep this position as it is, horizontal, okay, not uh, tilted or vertical. But for the direction, if you, as mentioned here, when we take a look to the vessel, the reference line uh, located on the right-hand side. So we will start creating uh, our vessel from right to left. When you have the reference point on the left side, you can do that. Uh, on the same way as you can do that, but uh, when you define the locations, uh, you will reverse the values. Okay, but here we need to take the values as they are. So from here, let's define the location to start from right to left direction. And here you can define the service of the equipment, serial number of this equipment, and deliver the blade dimensions. Okay, here if you have a defined value, you will enter it. After that, click on save. Now the setting of this equipment defined. Here for the design data of this equipment, when you select the vessel node from the tree, after that try to, uh, you have different ways to change the design data of this equipment. So the first one, by double clicking on the cell itself and modify the uh, values like that. Okay. Changing the units, for example. Okay. Or the by adding a new row, like uh, let's say like that, and the third value should be filled the character. Let's add dash. So now you have a new row. So by that way, you can add new rows. Okay, so the first way by double clicking on the cell itself and modify or creating a new row. 
Now, what uh, uh, if you uh, would like to remove one of those uh, rows, uh, you don't want to include it uh, in your drawings or uh, in your exported exception. It's easy to do that by selecting the checkbox itself to remove the selection of this row. That means when you make an export, it will not be exported to the drawings or in uh, the Excel sheet. Okay, if you would like to remove all, just uh, or select all, just select all from here or deselect so uh, the selection for all uh, checkboxes will be removed by that way. Uh, so we discuss uh, two different ways to uh, define the data here. The third way, which is importing an Excel sheet. Let's say we have an Excel sheet here for the design data. Let's check it. Here we fill uh, the data here with those values and be sure that all fields uh, include a value, no empty cells, because if you have an empty cell, you will face an issue. So you should fill all cells here and three columns. You should fill the three columns. After that, you will be able to import this Excel sheet. From here, for example, if you click on import from Excel sheet and go to the desktop, after that, select design data file. Here, SEG will inform you that if you would like to uh, reset the grid and remove the previous uh, data uh, when you click save now you will be you will import the new information from the uh, external excel sheet now when you click on save the information will be saved here now let's start uh, creating the uh, first item in this pressure vessel after uh, modifying or editing the equipment setting here we have this uh, this head it's an ellipsoidal head and here the uh, the information of this head and the uh, thickness. So here, uh, let's select the vessel and from elements or from uh, the toolbox bar, you can select the head or let's close this to keep enough area and use uh, the element tab. And from here, let's add the first head, which is right. Okay. And from the right head, you will find more than 17 types of different heads. One of them, which is the ellipsoidal head with crown and knuckle radius. Okay, uh, after selecting this type, we need to define the inside diameter, thickness, straight flange, and the minimum thickness after forming. So the inside diameter of this head is three meters. The thickness of this head is 16. Uh, straight flange is 50, and the minimum thickness after forming is 13.7. Again, yes, it's uh, 16, 13.7, and straight flange is 50. And from here, you can define the material or select it from the library. Now, if you click on save and try to create this head, you will find the direction of this head not suits the uh, same direction that you would like to create. It will be flipped on the other side. Okay, if you take a look from the left view, you can figure that the direction of the head not suits your need. It's on the other direction. To flip it, you will find here a checkbox for the two for flipping the head direction. So here, let's select the, this flip uh, checkbox and click on save. Now, when you click on start, simply you will get the correct direction of the head. Now, let's add the second uh, element. Now we have another uh, can. This can uh, with that length and that thickness. And now we need one more uh, one more definition for the longitudinal welding line. It's on uh, 70 degrees. So from here, let's add a can. So let's select the visual node from the tree. And from elements, let's select can one. So from here, let's add can one. And can one, uh, we discussed the different types of shell in the uh, first session of uh, SCG. So from here, let's select shell. And from here, let's define the inside diameter, three meters. The thickness is 16, and the longitudinal welding line orientation is 70. And the length of uh, this one is 1,960. And the gap here, by the way, uh, we discussed that you should add a gap if you have sheet metal bar include a welding line. 
This gap gives you the ability to get a flat pattern for this part. If you make this value equal zero, you will get an error. OK, so let's try that. Let's make it zero, for example, and click Save to show you uh, that in case of you have uh, one part as a sheet metal, you should have a, a gap, uh, a contour, a contour uh, flange like like this uh, shell. It's a circular shape and you give an extension. So in that case, if you click on simply. Uh, Autodesk Inventor will not be able to draw it and SEG when gives it a command. You can figure that it's created, but here it's on uh, the 3D model. If we open it, you can figure that the sketch itself include an, an error because the, the gap equal zero. That means uh, uh, SEG cannot draw it on Autodesk Inventor and Autodesk Inventor cannot make a flat pattern for it. So you should define a gap. So from here, let's reset this item. OK, and from can here, let's define this gap as two millimeters and click on save. Now let's create it again from scratch. Now you can figure that the shell is created. Now if we open it, for example, you, you should figure that you should have a gap here. You can make it 0 0.1, but not zero. By the way, not not zero because if you would like to get a flat better, you can get it like that. OK, I hope this point become clear. Now let's uh, go to the next part and add can uh, two. Can two. And uh, let's make can two looks like can one. If we take a look here for uh, can two, that's can two. The length of can two is a little bit different, but the thickness is the same. And the longitudinal welding line orientation here equal uh, 290. So let's uh, make can one equals can two to avoid repeating data entry again and click on add. Just after selecting can two, we will change the longitudinal welding line orientation and change the length of this course like that and click on save. Now let's add the third can. So if we take a look here to the third can, it's the uh, same length of the second can, but with a different longitudinal welding line orientation. Here's the seam line three. So from here, let's add can three, can three. Let's make it looks like can one. Okay, and change the length only. It has the same longitudinal welding line orientation but with a different length. And finally, can four. Can four. And let's make it looks like can two. The same length and same uh, thickness, same welding line. Here, if we take a look to that one, that one, they are the same uh, length and thickness. And for the orientation, here's uh, seam line two and seam line for they are both of them on 290. Now we, uh, I think we uh, complete the uh, four courses definition. Now let's create the last head. Let's take a look for that one. For here, uh, this head uh, thickness is 16, minimum thickness after forming 13.7, and straight flange is 50. It looks like the same, the first head. Now, so let's import it looks like the first head. So from here, left. And make it looks like the right head and let's click on it. Now, if you uh, take a look to uh, the left head. Now, uh, when we create it, it will take the same direction of the previous head. So here you have this head on that direction. So the uh, second head will take this direction. So to flip the direction of the second head, we need to remove this flip option and click on save. Now let's create the uh, shell courses and the uh, second uh, dash head. Now we have the vis main visible uh, body, okay, which created from four cans and two dashed heads. Now let's uh, add 
some other uh, attachments. Let's start with the uh, saddles. Here we have a saddle located on this position. Okay, and it's uh, the whip of this saddle is aligned to the right direction. Okay, and uh, let's check. Uh, sorry, let's come back here and let's open. Here for the available types of saddles in, in SCG. Okay, here. Let's uh, discuss uh, this point a little bit in detail. Here in SCG software, you will find those uh, main groups, and each group of those include uh, sub three types. Here for uh, the first type, which is include uh, ribs uh, on outside, like that. The second type, the web of, uh, of this saddle, uh, perpendicular, uh, has an edge here, and this edge goes to the center of the vessel, like that. So if we make an extent for those two lines, those will be uh, intersect with the uh, vessel center line. Here, the third type with vertical edge here, and this edge perpendicular to the base plate, mm -hmm. and another type with uh, saddle with a lifting block. Here for the first type, uh, the three subgroups, you can align the whip on the right side or on the left side, or you can make it on the middle. You can control the rib top width and rib bottom width. You can control the uh, uh, this uh, whip uh, bottom width, so you can make it with a wide width like that or make it with a narrow width, or you can make it with the vertical side, so this degree will be 90 degree. The uh, second type, which includes this straight edges, okay, you can make the same, uh, make a line for the uh, whip to left uh, right direction or left direction or on the middle. Uh, control the uh, whip bottom width to get those shapes. And for the third group, you can make the same by aligning the whip right, left, or middle, and uh, control the uh, bottom whip uh, width. And the same for the uh, last type of uh, saddle, so this is lifting up. Here for the uh, support saddle options, you can make a cut on the uh, whip. If you have a single uh, hole here and the whip on the middle, so you can make a cut to get enough area for uh, tightening the bolt. And this cut, uh, um, some specs include this uh, definition for the cut. Here for the slot holes, you can make the holes as a straight hole or a slot hole. You can make the base blade without any holes if you define the hole diameter as zero. Uh, you can change the pattern of holes in the longer direction or the shorter direction. You can add up nine ribs uh, for uh, the saddle. Now let's uh, create the first saddle and let's open the uh, saddle drawing. So from here, let's open the saddle drawing and get closer from the dimensions of this saddle. We have the fixed saddle here. So let's start with the fixed saddle. Uh, here we have the uh, saddle angle and rear plate angle the thicknesses, the height of this saddle, the base blade thickness. So let's start defining this saddle. Let's select the cam one. And the from elements uh, supporters group, you will find the different types of uh, supports you can add, like saddle, tilted saddle for tilted bezel. If you have uh, a tilted angle for this bezel, it's not a horizontal bezel. Uh, stack the saddle. If you have a, a stacked heat exchanger or stacked vessel, you can do that by, by using a stacked saddle. Support legs, uh, lugs, skirt, anchor chair, and uh, six different types of uh, support cradles. Uh, we need to add a saddle. So from here, let's add fix it. Saddle. And from the fixed saddle, let's define the select the suitable type for our case. As discussed here, we need to, uh, we, we have this uh, type, which is include outside ribs. 
Uh, and the case that you have the web is aligned to the right direction. So from here, let's select saddle web blade, case one, and the web on the right direction. Now let's define the uh, saddle information. The saddle angle is 120, and the uh, height of this saddle, 1850. The web thickness is 16. We have a weir plate, and the weir plate contact angle will be 132. The width of this weir plate is 150. The thickness is 16. And the fillet of the at the end of this uh, wheel plate is 50. So let's check that we have a fillet here at the corner of the wheel plate with 50, and the wheel plate width is 55, and the contact angle is 150. Now let's define the base blade information. Here we have the length, width, and thickness. So from here, let's define the base blade dimensions. So the length of uh, the base blade, 1,712. The width is 620. The base blade thickness is 35. And the hole diameter, let's see. The hole diameter, hole diameter is 48. So from here, let's define the hole diameter as 48. And let's uh, define the location of the first hole from short edge and long edge. So here, if we take a look here, this hole located from the short edge, here the short edge. So the location of the hole from the short edge will be 288.45. And for, from the long edge, if we take a look here, it's located, that's the long edge. So the offset of this hole from the long edge is 300. And then, like that, this, uh, saddle without sliding hole, so we will not ch select this checkbox, so uh, keep it as it is. And the number of holes we have four holes, and taking your consideration that SEG will make the spacing between holes equal. Uh, but here on uh, this drawing, the spacing is not equal. Here you have a uh, spacing here, a different space there, and again, uh, space here. So SEG will make the spacing here, there, and there will be equal on the 3 s So we will need to make a modification after creating the 3D model, but it's easy. It will not take a second, inshallah, seconds, inshallah. So let's complete the definition of this saddle. Let's define the uh, location of this saddle. It's 1,800. So the definition, uh, the, as discussed on the uh, first session in uh, SCG, the location of uh, the elements uh, shall be defined from the seam line of the main bar. Here we have this shell. We don't refer it in SCG from the tan line. Okay, so here this value, which is uh, 1130, we will decrease the straight flange length. So we will get here, so we will get the length of uh, or the location we will get the location of this saddle from the seam line of this uh, parent element which is can so the location we will define it here and the orientation it's located on 190 degree that means SEG give you the ability to control the orientation of the saddle if you have hanging saddle located on top or hanging a saddle on a wall if you have a small vessel and this saddle uh, located on a wall, so it will be on 90 degree, on uh, 270 degrees. So you can change the orientation of this saddle uh, from here. Okay, now let's uh, check the value of wear blade offset. So if we take a look here to this image, here we have the wear blade offset, which is from the web uh, outside surface to the end of the wear blade. This value. Let's take an image here to. Uh, identify this point in detail here. If we get closer here, here the web offset. That's the weird plate offset. And here we have another value which is web offset from the base blade. Okay, so we need to define those values. So let's come back here and from here let's uh, define the weird blade offset. So let's come back to the drawing. And here for the weird plate offset, it's 20. Uh, Five, so let's uh, change uh, this value. 
and let's come back here to complete the other side information for here if you have a cut um, uh, let's start with this checkbox first uh, if you would like to make the sides straight sides you will keep this checkbox activated that means the sides of the saddle will be perpendicular to the straight side not tilted to inside or uh, to uh, outside like that uh, image it's not tilted to inside so you have a narrow width here or a wide width it's a perpendicular so the side will be like that vertically to the bottom so we will keep this checkbox activated if if not you can remove it and define the bottom width of the width but in our case it's with a straight side here if you would like to make a cut on the whip so you will activate the cut and define the cut uh, dimensions here for the web offset as mentioned here that the web offset value which is the offset from uh, the uh, web to the ba uh, base blade uh, end so let's uh, check the uh, drawing here so uh, the offset here is 60 millimeters that's it so let's define it as 60 and uh, we have outer ribs Okay, so let's activate this checkbox. That means we have outer ribs. And let's define the ribs top width and the bottom width. So here, the width at top and the bottom are equal. So it's 500 top and bottom. So change it to be 500 at top and bottom. Change the thickness to be 16. Material the same. And from here, we have uh, a chamfer on the ribs. And if you would like to make uh, add a mid rib, you will activate this one. But in our case, we haven't a mid rib, no mid rib in, on this saddle. So we will not activate it, but we will activate the intermediate uh, ribs. So from here, let's take a look. Here we have uh, the spacing between the intermediate ribs. So let's calculate this times two. So that's the spacing. So let's take this value, copy and define the spacing between the intermediate ribs. And we have another intermediate rib, so we define those. We still have to define those. So let's activate another intermediate ribs and define the spacing between them. So from here, let's open uh, the calculator and add uh, plus five, three, four, plus five, three, four. So the spacing between the second saddles from here to there with that value. So let's come back to a CG and import this value here and click on save. Now the first is saddle information defined. Uh, as mentioned uh, on the first session in SCG, if you would like to make a rendering or presentation for element during the creation, you will need to activate some options here from the app setting. So let's go to app setting and open the app setting and from here activate the parent preview and the child preview those options will give you the ability to make a rendering or pre presenting the elements during creation now let's click on save and start creating the set the first element on the saddle which is the web after that uh, the base plate the outer whips uh, ribs sorry the first intermediate ribs after that the second intermediate ribs finally the weird plate okay now we have the uh, first uh, saddle and let's add the second saddle so from here let's select the can one and from saddles, let's add a uh, sliding saddle. Okay. Now the sliding saddle, as you can see on the uh, this drawing, the location or, or the uh, direction of the web located on the uh, left hand side, not on the right hand side. So we need to change the uh, that case to make this saddle located at the left end. Let's change the uh, dimensions of this one. So let's come back here and let's check the dimensions. The uh, wear plate contact angle, uh, the saddle angle here, 
that's the height of the saddle, not that one. Okay, so we have this height to the end of the base blade. Okay, so the height is a little bit different, and we have some other uh, uh, Teflon and other layers below the saddle, and we will discuss how to deal with those items and how we can add it to uh, the assembly of the saddle and uh, add them on SEG uh, pillow fatigue. But let's create the main items or uh, the included items in SEG library. After that, we will discuss how to uh, create uh, your own items to the, uh, the assembly. Now let's define the dimensions of this one. So the uh, height is uh, 1841, I think. Uh, yes, 1841, that's the height, and the thickness is 16, and we have a wear plate, the wear plate contact angle, to be like that, the width is 150, it's 16, and the fillet is 50, the base blade length, 272, and the width, like that, thickness 35, all the angle is 48, and offset, 88.5 and 310 and here we have a sliding hole because it's a sliding saddle so if we take a look here we have a slot hole and this hole with a length 118 so the straight edge here only the straight edge will be this value minus this value so let's calculate the straight edge so the straight uh, the slot lens itself, the straight edge on the slot lens will be 70. So let's make this value as 70 and define the number of holes as seven holes. Now let's change the location of this saddle. So here we have uh, the location. So let's uh, add this value, uh, that value plus that value, and we will decrease the straight flange lens. So let's calculate it plus. 840 minus 50. So here we have uh, the location of the saddle, the second saddle. So let's define it. The orientation will be the same, and for uh, the value of the wear blade offset, it's 25. And on the other side, let's define the web offset for 60. And we have an outer ribs. The top width is 500, sorry, 550. The bottom is the same and the thickness is 16. We have intermediate ribs. Okay, the intermediate rib, uh, ribs spacing is 5, 3, 4. And for the second intermediate ribs, we have 1, 6, 0, 2. After that, let's click on save. Now let's create the assembly of the saddle. That's the second saddle, and you can figure that the uh, location of the web will be located on the uh, other side. I think we uh, change the number of uh, slots. It should be four, not eight, so let's check that out. Sorry. So the number of slots should be four instead of seven. So let's change it and wait until finishing the modification. After that, we can save and update this part again so from here let's get it back to four and click on save now let's uh, create uh, another part here we have a, a ring connected to the uh, saddle okay uh, and on this the same for the other saddle we have a ring connected to this saddle as a stiffening ring on the same locations and to, to get the dimensions of th this ring here, if we uh, take a look here, that's the ring. So here's the ring dimension. It's a built up section. We have a blade here and another vertical blade here. Okay, so we need to modify, uh, to modi define this, uh, those dimensions. So from here, let's add external stiffening ring. So for, let's select CAN1. And from CAN1, uh, uh, let's select elements. And uh, here, uh, there is a, a, a group called external attachments. So the external attachments, you will find different types of attachments. 
And in that case, we need the external stiffening ring. So let's select ring one. Let's define the ring one net. Here, after adding it, you will find the different types of rings like equal angle, IBE, HEA. In our case, it's a built up section. So let's select built up section. And from here, uh, we have a, a top plate. Uh, you can figure that you can add uh, just a ring. You can add uh, a top plate or bottom plate. So uh, in our case, we have a top plate. So we will activate this one and start defining the dimensions. The height dimension is the height from the uh, outside surface of the shell up to the end uh, diameter or the inside diameter of the uh, outside ring. So here, if we come back there, the height here, which you mentioned on the drawing, is uh, 210. So we need to decrease 16 millimeters from that height to get the height of the vertical ring. So that's the height. So we need to define it here. And the thickness is 16. And the location is the same location of the uh, first saddle, which is located on 1,080. OK, like that. And the, uh, the uh, top plate width data, let's check it. The width is 180, so 180. The thickness is 16. And let's make the orientation at 100, the longitudinal welding line orientation because it's a plate. You can get a sheet metal development for it. Let's make this gap as two and click on save. OK, so now we have uh, the first ring. Let's add the second ring. And the second ring looks like ring one, but with a different location. So during importing this one, let's import it by using same as option. So from here, let's select stiffening ring and add ring two. And from here, let's select this checkbox, which give you the ability to make this ring identical with that one. And click on add. Now you will have uh, the second ring, only you will need to uh, change the location of the second one to be the same with the second saddle and let's click on save. Now when you uh, click on the assembly, don't forget that we update the second saddle, change the number of holes. So it's easy, will go through this part just to update the number of holes before going to the next part. Here you can figure that the holes updated to four holes instead of seven. After that, SEG will start creating the external stiffening rings. OK, now we, uh, as you can see, the stiffening ring becomes as a complete ring. It's intersected with the saddle. Now we need to make a modification on this ring to make it make sense to make a cut uh, up to the end of the saddle. So how to make that? Before that, let's uh, learn one uh, more uh, order, which is making a group. This group will give you the ability to uh, here, for example, uh, before making this one, you can figure that in this drawing, uh, you include here the stiffening ring with the saddle as a one detail. So if you would like to make a group for our, for items, you can group them uh, uh, inside SEG to create a new assembly for uh, for this uh, part, uh, or uh, sorry, for some parts to make a group uh, as a sub assembly in Autodesk Inventor to use it uh, in your drawings. And that's usually used if you have a case like that, or if you would like to make a detail for a manhole or a nozzle. So you will collect the items that you would like to make it in one drawing. You will collect them in one group. OK, now let's uh, come back here. And to make a group uh, for uh, fixed saddle and ring one, Let's move the ring one before the sliding saddle. So let's select move and from here move after fixed saddle. So let's select fixed saddle. So the ring one, now you can figure that it comes below the fixed saddle. In that case, you can make you a group for them. How to make a group? 
If you select any node from the tree and right click, you will find a group option here. Uh, and uh, from this shortcut menu, you can select add group and name give a name for this group like first toggle okay, and from here select as a start item is fixed saddle and ring one so up to ring one so uh, this group will include those items only when you click on save you can figure that uh, here you have a new folder here called first saddle this folder or this sub assembly includes the fixed ring and uh, fixed saddle and ring one when you click on the start assembly here you will find a new assembly created here called first saddle if we take a look here closer look and take a look here you will find that you have now a new sub assembly called first saddle here that's the name first saddle and that sub assembly includes the fixed saddle assembly and ring one assembly so by that way you can make a detail for this group easily from SEG software now let's make the same thing with the uh, second saddle so from here let's make a new group and from group let's add group and name this one as second saddle let's make this saddle start from uh, sliding saddle and ring two now let's click on save after making the group you should click on start assembly don't uh, edit or modify anything on the tree unless you make an update okay now you can figure that you have a new sub assembly here let's take another print screen and when you count here the first group as mentioned which is that one which include a fixed saddle and right saddle another assembly which is second saddle include the sliding saddle and ring two so by that way you can make sub assemblies by grouping them in uh, a group now let's uh, modify the uh, uh, the, uh, the ring to suit the uh, requirements here which mentioned here to make a cut on the uh, outer ring and side ring by that way so from here let's open this ring uh, this saddle now we have this saddle assembly let's remove or make the UCSs invisible now if you double click on the uh, ring you will go to uh, inside the level of detail of this ring and now let's select the outer ring and make a cut on it now let's create a new sketch and select one of the origin planes here let's select uh, y explain and let's project the lines outside lines of the web and make close this section like that make extrude cut extrude and make it extrude cut through all and click on save uh, let's make it on the two sides okay so the cut should be on the two sides now we make a cut on the outer ring okay two suits the uh, the outer ribs now let's update the or modify the uh, inside ring so let's double click on it the same steps we will do let's select one of the origin planes <clears throat> which is xy plane and create a new sketch now we need to project some uh, lines to use them let's project that line let's project that arc okay now you can figure that you, you have the ability to watch or uh, configure the lines. So as discussed, you can make a slice graphs from the shortcut or F7 from the keyboard to make a slice graphs, make a cut up to the sketch plan. Now we need to make uh, an, another uh, arc with an offset here. So let's check that. We have a gap here with 15 millimeters and we have this cut or this notch with 25 millimeters so let's come back to to this inventor and let's project those lines and from here let's create an arc from here to there and let's project this line weld the end of this arc to here another one there define the diameter as 
five. So we have this arc. Now we need to make a gap here. So let's select that type of arc and define the arc length here. Or you can make it the distance from here to there as 15 millimeters. Okay, now we have, uh, let's uh, convert those lines to construction lines. Now let's extend this line like that and make another arc from here to there to close this one. And let's make those lines invisible and change those to uh, construction lines. Sorry, not uh, visible. It's construction line. Extend this one up to here. And now let's make a mirror for those lines. So let's make a center line. Make a construction line and a mirror those lines from here to there. So let's select this arc, that arc, and the line. So from the select, we can select curve two. And now let's make a mirror around that line. Now we have, sorry, there is mirror again. So let's select this one, the that circle and that line. So from select, let's select curve two. And from here, let's select the curve two. And now select mirror line to make it mirrored around that line. Now let's extrude this one with a cut. So for, by using extrude, close, select the closed area, make it on the two sides and make it through all to make the cut. Now when you click finish, you will get the right configuration for the cut of this stiffening ring around the set. Now, uh, the same steps, we can do it with the uh, second saddle, but here we make it for one. So you can figure out how you can do it with the second saddle. Okay, here we have this cut like that. Now let's add some other items to this vessel. So let's take a look. Here we have uh, lifting lugs. We have four lifting lugs, uh, two in this location. Okay and another two lifting lugs on that location. So from here, let's select the first can. And from elements, you will find the different types of lifting lugs. Here to uh, define the difference between them, let's discuss those next slides. Here you will find uh, a different types of lifting lugs suits horizontal or vertical vessels. And you will find two different types of trunnions. Here for uh, the first type of lifting lug, it's used in a longitudinal direction, suits the longitudinal direction. You can control the uh, adding a wear blade, adding cooler. You can weld it directly to the shell. And you can control uh, the dimensions like the whole offset, uh, the all dimensions. One of them is E, which is dimension E, which uh, the location of the hole from the edge will change, which give you the ability to change the configuration of this lifting lug. Another one, which is uh, uh, lifting lug, suits the circumference direction. And this one suits our uh, requirements in the current case. Here you can add a wear plate uh, uh, coolers, and you can change the uh, uh, location of the hole from by changing the D dimension and E dimension. Another type of lifting lug suits the mid-range size of uh, horizontal vessels with a stiffening rib. Another type suits the large size of horizontal pressure vessels. Okay. Uh, one of the common types of the lifting lugs suits the vertical pressure vessels. You can, as you can see, you can change the, uh, the end of this lifting lug to make it with a felt uh, radius at the end or with a chamfered end. You can make the lug at the end with, uh, without any uh, uh, cut at the end, or with a uh, cut with a sharp corners, or with cut with fillet corners so like that. You can add a stiffening whip to the head or a cone if you have a cone uh, after the shed. Here, another type of lifting lugs for the longitudinal direction. You can make the end with a fillet end or a chamfered end. 
it suits the small sizes of pressure vessels like heat exchangers or uh, small equipment. Another type suits the circumference direction for equipment, uh, small sizes like uh, shell, uh, like bonnet or uh, channel uh, side of heat exchanger. Another type of lifting lugs suits the horizontal vessels. And here the cross type of lifting lug. Uh, if you have a case to lift your equipment from a single point, so you will uh, need to use the cross uh, lifting lugs. Uh, another type of lifting lug for uh, the vertical vessels. Uh, you can use this type for uh, mid-size uh, or uh, large vertical vessels, and you can use it if you have a body flange at the end of this vertical vessel. So you you may need to uh, extend a little bit outside the uh, shell outside diameter to get an access to add uh, a shackle. Uh, and the lifting devices. Okay, here, another type of uh, trunnion. So you can figure that you have the ability to add an outer uh, ring. Here in that in the first case, you can add an, an outer ring or in the blade. You can uh, remove it. Uh, uh, here for the external stiffening ring, you can add a single ring or a double stiffening ring is at uh, uh, outside. In the inside, uh, you can make it uh, without any stiffening, or you can add a single ring uh, to inside or a double ring to inside. Here, another type of lifting lugs, uh, which suits the vertical and horizontal uh, vessels, so you can change the orientation of this uh, lifting lug. Now, let's come back to uh, the vessel, and from here, let's add the second type of lifting lugs, which suits our case. So, from here, Let's add lifting lug one. Lifting lug one. Okay. And for this lifting lug, let's define the dimensions of this one. So let's take a look to the lifting lug dimensions here. So uh, here, that's the width of this one and the whole offset from here, uh, whole offset from base. So let's start defining it like that or seven four two seven and the offset 90 the offset e is 175 the thickness is 23 the straight edge is 10 10 and the radius is 100 and the whole diameter is 70 millimeters we have a rebad we have a rebad the rebad width like that and the length Will be like that. So dimension A, which is the width, is 50, and the length is 5 to 5, and the uh, thickness is 16, the uh, fillet is 25, and the location of uh, this lifting lug is 1. Uh, let's calculate it from growing. If we take a look here, it's 1450. As discussed, this value measured from the seam line, so we need to decrease 50 millimeters, which is the straight flange length. So it will be like that. And the orientation of this lifting lug, let's take a look. Sorry, not on that view, on the general arrangement drawing. So it's located on 35 degrees, okay, from the vertical line. So it's 35, so let's come back here and define this value as 35 and click on save. Now we need to, uh, let's let's uh, create it first. After that, uh, discuss how to uh, add the uh, second one and why we don't use the pattern for this one, because it will not be uh, symmetric. In case of making a, a, a pattern for uh, this one, Okay, uh, you will not get uh, that because this one is not symmetric. If you take a look here, the offset from that side is different from that side. It's not a symmetric one. So uh, to uh, to make uh, another uh, lifting lug, let's create uh, the same type, which is lifting lug two, and make it looks like lifting lug one. Okay, but we will make a change here after selecting this checkbox. We will make a change for the that value which is that one, because we will uh, rotate this one. We will not put it in the same orientation. 
Oh, sorry. Let's go on. The detail on the other drawing. Let's go back to the general arrangement. Here, uh, this lifting lug. Okay, the, this lifting lug. Uh, uh, here, uh, you can figure that the, uh, the shape of this lifting lug differ from uh, the detail. If you take a look, here it's not, here it's not symmetric. You have a different, and you can, you can figure that easily when you check it uh, uh, by a visual inspection. But here, you can figure that it's, it's uh, symmetric, not the same detail. And that's one, uh, one of the uh, powerful points of the 3D uh, modeling. Yeah. The detail will be the same for the uh, 2D. Here, to, to make this one uh, on a different angle, so it will be uh, three at 325, so the reference line is here, so we will rotate on uh, the, uh, the direction of, so let's take a print screen to show you what I would like to say. So here we have uh, the reference line, okay, and to make the, uh, to define the, the first uh, lifting lug orientation, we go in that direction, so the angle was 35 degrees. Okay, for the second one, we will define this one up to here, okay, with 325, okay, for the second one. And the uh, value here, we will, which is 175, we will uh, flip it. So this value, we will make it like that. And the location, we will keep it as it is, but the orientation, we will change it. Now let's click on save and check the uh, 3D of uh, this element. So if we uh, take a half section here, let's take a half section at that point and let's take a look at that. You can figure that they are Symmetric here, the distance from the center here, it's the same from here to there by flipping the value of the offset. Now let's remove the half section and come back to the 3D model. And now let's add the second lifting lugs. From here, let's select CAN1. And from here, let's select the same type and add lifting lug 3. Make it looks like lifting lug 1 but with a different location. Okay, so let's change the location of this one. Okay, save. And for the last lifting lug. Or it will look like lifting lug two, but with a different location. So let's change the location. Be like that and click on save. Now we uh, define the uh, lifting lugs and now let's start the uh, assembly of the other lifting lugs. Now we will not need uh, this detail unless we would like to make the uh, the earthing lug and uh, or the ground lug and make the uh, detailing for uh, those uh, down blades uh, uh, with this uh, saddle. Okay, so we need to make those and we will make them externally. That one you can do it from SCG. Uh, and I will show you how to make it uh, from SEG and how to make it externally. But right now, let's close this drawing and open another drawing. Sorry, we need to add the uh, uh, platform clips. Okay, let's add the uh, platform clips. We have here uh, clips on, uh, sorry, clips on that side and uh, some other clips on that side. Okay, we have uh, one, two, three, four. We have four groups, one at the left side and other on the right hand side. Okay, and here one of them, a detail for one of them and a detail for the other one. And if we come back, to the drawing here, the uh, short one on 90 degree and the uh, long one on 
the 27 degree, both of them facing located on zero. So now let's uh, add the first uh, flip. So from here, uh, let's take a look if it has a name or not. Um, no indicated names. Uh, BF, yeah, yes, it's BF2, okay, and BF1. Okay, so let's start with the uh, long one. So from here, let's add from the external attachments, let's select platform support. Okay, and the name will be PF. Okay, PF1 one. Uh, one. Okay, let's name. Uh, okay, dash one. Okay, and let's add it. And for uh, this uh, support, uh, let's select the suitable shape. Uh, and from here, let's make it as a UPN support. And the size of the UPN will be 130. The projection of uh, this one, let's check it from the drawing. So the projection measured in SCG from here, this point, which is the outside surface of the shell, up to the end here at that line, not at the top. So we need to decrease this value with the uh, blade thickness. So from here, let's open the calculator and find the projection. So it will be like that. Come back here, define the projection of this one and the axial orientation. Uh, let's keep this and to show you the difference, uh, how to change this uh, value. And for uh, the location of, uh, of this one, we take a look to the general arrangement. Here, it's not located here, it's on the detailed drawing. So let's check the location. So the location here, and we need to decrease the lens with uh, 50 millimeters, the straight flange. So uh, the location will be like that, and the orientation at zero degree. It's not a radial, it's a helicide. So we will remove the radial checkbox and find the helicide and describe the helicide offset. So if we take a look to the detail here, it's uh, offset with uh, the offset value is uh, 600 millimeters from visual center line. So the offset is 600 millimeters. And the offset direction, let's check the offset direction from the general arrangement. Here we have the short one, it will be on 90 degrees. So the offset will be in uh, clockwise direction. So let's keep that one at uh, clockwise direction and let's add a weir plate. We have a wear blade and the wear blade width will be 15 and the thickness will be 16 and the fillet width, let's make it 50. And from here, let's add an end blade. So the end blade dimensions, if we take a look here. Okay, it's uh, 150 by 310. So it's 150, 310. And the thickness of this one is 16. The whole diameter is in the whole offset. This whole offset here on the long edge is 40 and 30 on the short edge, so 40 and 30. We have two holes, okay, a four holes, so let's keep it like that and click on simply. Now we will get the uh, first platform clip. We have a UBN and we will discuss the orientation or the axial orientation of this support before uh, going to the next step. As you can see here, the orientation of, of this one uh, comes parallel to the uh, center line of the visit. So from here, from the axial orientation, you can rotate the, uh, the, uh, uh, the beam around, uh, vertically around the, uh, uh, the ax, uh, or the center line of this one. So in case of making it a 90 degree and you click on save, now when you click on save, the orientation of this uh, one will be rotated 90 degree around the uh, vertical uh, axis of, of it. So you can rotate the orientation you, so that you can control complete the orientation of this one. One more option here, we, you could make it, which is a helicide, a tilted. So by using tilted option, you can control the tilted angle. For example, if you would like to make it on 90 degree as a tilted angle and I click on save, 
we will remove this option, but I would like to show you that uh, with the uh, tilted app angle option, you can make this one uh, tilted on the horizontal uh, level. So you can make a tilted support like that, not a vertically. So you can control the tilting uh, angle by that way. So let's keep it back, make it back 90 degrees and remove the tilted option and click save. Now let's add another uh, support uh, with another uh, location. So from here, let's add, select the can and add external uh, platform clip, which is platform 1-2. It looks like that one. Uh, let's add another one. After that, uh, change the location for all in one time. So platform 1-3, make it looks like and another one, platform uh, one, clips four, and let's make it looks like one, sorry, uh, sorry, four, and make it looks like one. Uh, when you make a, a, a same name typical for a previous one, SCG will detect that and inform you that name is already exist. Now let's go to the second location and define the location of the second clip. Here, so it will be that plus that minus 50. So from here, let's define the location of the second one here. Uh, the location of this one, location will be 4252 and save. For the third one, it will be uh, 6472, click save. For the last one, it will be eight seven four two and now let's click save okay now let's add another uh, uh, the other clip on the other side okay yourself so from let's come back here we have another uh, clip on the other uh, side okay so this clip uh, it uh, looks like the previous one but with a different offset Okay, from the visual center line, it's on the other side. And here the projection is different to give you the same projection from visual center line. <clears throat> okay, now let's create a new uh, clip. From here, let's add platform clip, platform 2 1. Okay, let's make it look like uh, uh, platform clip 1, but uh, we will make some changes. So from here, let's change the projection. So the projection here is uh, 743, 16. So it's 743, and let's reduce 16. So it will be like that. So that's the projection of the second one. And the location will be the same, the orientation the same, but the offset is different. So the offset here is 1,270. 1270 and the direction of the offset it's not on the clockwise if we take a look to the uh visual view here if we make a print screen, i think uh, this one is included here we have the first support and here the second support here uh, to make an offset from zero degree you can use the uh let's let's use that one you can move it on the clockwise direction so you will get it on that side. But in zero degree, if you make it counterclockwise, you will get it on that direction. So we will need to make it on counterclockwise to give it another direction. So from here, click on save. And now when you click start, okay, you will start <clears throat> updating these all supports and uh, the remaining will be created. Here for the first one, we remove the tilting angle option. Okay, and the second supports will be generated.
Okay, the other side uh, platform support. Now we have the four supports on that side and one support on that side. Let's create the remaining supports. After that, we will proceed inshallah with the nozzle. From here, let's select CAN1 and from uh, platform clips, let's add platform to clips two. Okay, and let's make it looks like platform two clips one and another clips platform two clip three and looks like platform two clips one and the last one platform two clip four and make it looks like That now. now let's change the locations. So the location of this one will be 4252. Click save. The next one is 6572. Save. For the last one, it will be 8742. Now let's add uh, nozzles. Now I think we uh, on this, let's close that one. And now let's open the uh, nozzle details. So from here, let's open the nozzle details uh, and take a look to the general arrangement here. We have uh, two nozzles on the right side, uh, right head. We have N1 and N2. Okay, those nozzles with internal projection, as you can see, you have a connection at the outside and connection at inside. So we need to define this nozzle as a nozzle with internal and external projection. Here we have the uh, description of, of this one. Here uh, we have uh, this nozzle as a 14. Uh, we have a flange 14 inches, uh, 150 as a rating with a schedule 60. Okay, and here the neck of this nozzle as a blade. It's not a pipe. Okay, so it's a nozzle with internal and external projection and the neck of this nozzle from blade, not a pipe. So let's come back to the head from here. So let's select the head and from the nozzles tab, let's select this type, which is nozzle type B, which give you the ability to make external and internal projection. So let's add in and click save. Now you have a uh, in one nozzle as mentioned it's not from pipe it's from blade so we will need to change the type to be nozzle from blade uh, connected to head and the change the uh, outside diameter of this pipe to suit 14 inches uh, pipe so from here let's define the uh, outside diameter of this pipe and from here the thickness is 16 keep the longitudinal building line orientation as it is. Gap should be take a value. You can make it 0.112, but it should as a value. And the offset of this nozzle is 1000 millimeters. So it's in this value and the orientation at zero. The projection, let's keep it as it is. And the internal projection is 2000. The projection from the outside, we will calculate it by using the calculator after adding the flange. So from here, let's add a reinforced bed. Okay, we have a reinforced bed with one, uh, 165 and the thickness is 16. Here, the surface of this uh, nozzle is inlet nozzle. And now let's click on save. Here you will find some options like radial, barrel, and tilted. Those options give you the ability to control the uh, uh, the location, not the location, the orientation or the tilting angle of the nozzle. Here, if you select a barrel, it will be parallel to the visual center line. So the center line will be parallel to the visual center line like that. If you make it tilted, so you can control the uh, the angle if we take an image from that one and make a print screen it comes here so from here you can change the center line of of this one 
to define the angle from here. So the center line will be on that direction. You can control the center line uh, orientation. You can make it perpendicular like that. So you can define the uh, angle as 180. So the center line, you can change it by using those options. Now let's click on save and let's add an external flange to this nozzle, which is N1 flange. And for this flange, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, 40 inches with uh, 150 rating and schedule 60. So let's uh, select the size. So you select the type first. It's will the neck rest the face according to SMB 16.5. Select the size and <clears throat> the uh, schedule 60 and click on save. Now, if you come back to the nozzle again and open the calculator button, you will figure that you have the ability to define the projection from the seam line. Projection from the seam line. So let's open the, uh, the detail again of this nozzle and check the detail here. The projection from the seam line, from the seam line, not the tan line as mentioned here. So we need to increase 50 millimeters above this value. So 9.75 plus 50. Now you have the projection of this nozzle. From here, let's define the projection like that and click on calculate. When clicking on calculate, SEG will start creating a sketch to measure the actual projection of the pipe. And automatically, it will inform you that the projection of the pipe will be like that. When you click on save, let's, let's make it near here and take a print screen to show you here. When you make the projection with that value, okay, from the seam line, the projection of the pipe, which is a straight line here from here to there, okay, the uh, projection of the pipe from the center line uh, will be calculated automatically, and this value will be reflected here. When you click save, the value comes from here to there. Okay, so let's click on save. And automatically configure that the projection now reflected to this one. Okay, now let's add an internal flange for this one. So from here, let's add in one two, and click add. After adding it, you can make it looks like F1. Now let's make it. Uh, let's in, uh, include it. Uh, during importing looks like N1 and figure what happened. So from here, if you select uh, the internal connection point and select F1, from here, if you select N, uh, define the name of this one as F2. After that, select it to be same as N1 F. When you click add, it will comes in the same level. So when you click add, you can figure that it comes after N1 F, but you need it here. So after, to, to make that in a correct way, you will need to import it first. So it's N1, F2. After importing it, you can make it same as the previous flange. Okay, so now we have N1 flange uh, located on the right head. Now, if you click on assembly, you will carry this nozzle with those flanges. After that, you still have three uh, platform supports so they will be created. Now let's create the assembly. We still have, we still have uh, two platform clips remaining. That's the third one. After that, the last platform clip.
Okay, now after uh, creating this platform support, we will uh, create the second nozzle, which is uh, M2. Here if we take a look at that view, here we have this the first nozzle, the rebad, and now let's add the second nozzle. So from here, let's select the right head, and from nozzles, let's select the nozzle uh, head type B. So it's M2. For importing it, you will need to make it looks like N1 because it's the same nozzle. And let's add an external flange, so N2 F1. And let's make it looks like N1 F because all of them are the same. And the same thing, we will do it N2 F2. And it, after that, make it looks like the previous flange. Okay, and from here for, for N2, we will change the orientation. It's the same information, but here the orientation in 190 degree, it's below here. So let's change the orientation and for the service of this model, it's okay. And click on save. Now when you create the assembly, you will create the uh, second nozzle uh, at below. Okay, now uh, we will add the uh, flanges to inside and outside. Okay, now let's take uh, a section view here along the vessel. Let's take a section like that and take a look inside the vessel. Here we have the internal projection of this pipe inside the vessel. It will be like that. Now let's add another uh, nozzle to uh, this vessel. We have N1, N2, and and N3, we have N3 here. Okay, it's located on K3. Okay, so it's better to select uh, the parent uh, element. So it's located on K3. And let's check the dimensions of uh, N3. So from this table, N3 is uh, air souring uh, outlet. And here it's uh, 10 inches from pipe with a schedule. Uh, 90, so uh, 80, sorry. So from here, let's select the CAN3. So from here, select CAN3. And from elements, let's add a nozzle. It's without internal projection. It's with external projection only. So you will select this type and define this nozzle as in three. And from here, let's select a nozzle from pipe. Define the size as 10 inches, schedule as 80 and define the location. So the location of this one, it, it's uh, here. Uh, it will be 5,800. So we need to decrease the 50 millimeters and decrease the previous uh, courses. Yes. So here the location of this nozzle on CAN3. So let's create it like that. It's in zero degree. And we have a reinforced bed. This reinforced bed, we take a look to in three. Here, after calculating uh, the outside diameter minus that one, we can get the uh, rebed and 105. And here, the thickness of the rebed. And the, the uh, surface of this nozzle is here. Sorry. Okay. And click on save. Okay, now you can figure that the projection is not def defined in a correct way yet, unless adding the flange. So from here, let's add the flange in three flange. And from here, select the type as weld necklace deface. Define the size as 10 inches, the schedule as 80. And from here, click on save. Now, if you come back to the nozzle again, and open the calculator, you can define the projection of this one. So if we take the drawing, the projection is 
2125. So 2125, when you click calculate, automatically the projection of the pipe will be calculated here. As mentioned, it will be reflected to the cell of projection. And here's the height of the flange. So if we click that in screen, here with that projection, you have the projection here, which is the projection from visual center line. And by knowing the height of the flange here, SEG detected the connected flange. SEG now able to calculate the projection of the pipe, which is that value. So by that way, it will be reflected here when you click save. So the value from here, there will be calculated. Okay. Now when you click on save, the projection value will be reflected here. Now when you click on start as simply, we will get this nozzle like that now let's add another uh, nozzles so from here let's go to nozzle n4 we have n3 so n4 down here okay it's located on can1 so from here let's select can1 and from elements let's add uh, nozzle n4 before that let's take a look to this nozzle a closer look so from here n4 here it's with an uh, internal projection and we have an end plate here and this end plate with some holes so let's define this one uh, in the four here mentioned as uh, four inches pipe with a scalable 120 so from here let's select a nozzle with internal projection okay so it's in four four save now from here, let's define this one as a nozzle from pipe. Select the size as four inches, 120 is the schedule, and the location will be uh, that value uh, minus 50, so it will be 195. So let's find the location here. And the orientation will be on 180 degrees, it's uh, down not at the top and it has a rebad so the rebad width is 50 millimeters and the thickness is 16 and the uh, service of this one is which is in four it's a drain so it's in and click the internal projection if we take a look here to the internal projection of this detail where it is here we have the internal projection so the internal projection here is uh, 316 so we need to reduce this value with uh, 16 millimeters for the top plate and 16 millimeter for the shell thickness because the internal projection in SEG measured from the internal surface so the projection from the internal will be with that value so take that value and Reflect it here. Now let's click on save. Now let's add external flange. So from here, let's add N4 flange. Okay. And define the size of this one. Select the type. Select size. Schedule. And click on save. Now when you come back to N4, you can define the projection in a correct way. The projection here from the visual center line is. 1,666, so that and click on calculate. Okay, and click on save. Now the projection of this uh, nozzle is calculated correctly. Okay, now let's uh, add an internal blade to this one. So from here, let's add the internal blade like that okay and as in the blade to the pipe so at the inlet from uh, the uh, other attachments you can figure that 
you have the ability to add an end blade. So let's add end blade in four. Eight. And click enter. Now, when you select it like that, you will find the different types of end blades, like a rectangular end blade with holes, rectangular end blade without holes, circular end blade. Uh, the suitable type is a rectangular end blade without holes, and let's define the length and width. It's 230, like that. Okay, so length and width. And the thickness for this one is. Uh, 16 millimeters as mentioned here okay so it's 16 the orientation is zero it's symmetric and you click save now when you click start simply you will create the uh, the bottom nozzle which is n4 with the uh, internal uh, blade at the end Okay, now if we take a half section, let's take a half section like that. Take a look to one side. We can figure that you have this nozzle with this plate to one side. We need to make some holes inside this plate. So if we you would like to make a modification, you can open this plate like that and create a sketch. And from here, if we uh, take a look to the sketch falling. Okay. We have uh, those holes, so we can make a, a, a rough location for uh, the first hole. We have three holes here. All of them is vertically, okay? And the location of this hole, it's with a spacing 10 millimeters, so 10, 20, 30, 40. So from here to there, it's 40 millimeters. From here to there, it's 40. And the spacing from here to there is 10. Same from that side. And this one located in horizontal position with that one. Now, if we make a pattern for those holes, we will get this row. Okay. So let's make uh, this pattern. So we have one, two, three, four, uh, nine. So nine with the spacing. So we will select those and let's uh, create uh, or select one of origin. Let's select create two lines, two working lines, construction lines to use them as a reference for patterning like that. From here, let's select a pattern and select those holes. Select that line reverses direction. We have nine holes with a spacing 10 millimeters and we have Holes. Let's make some other holes here. Can we make those in a horizontal uh, position? Make those aligned vertically. Like that. Define the spacing from here to there with 10 millimeters. After that, we can make a pattern. So we draw those holes. We can make a pattern for three holes. So let's come back and make a pattern rectangular pattern for those in that direction. And you can flip the direction, make it three with the spacing 10 millimeters. After that, you can select those and make a mirror on the other side like that. So you will get those. Now we need to add uh, those four holes. OK, so on the sketch, you can add a hole like that, those four holes. So we can align those horizontally, align those vertically, align those vertically, and those horizontally. So after that, you can make a mirror of those around that line, around the holes, around, uh, let's select all of them. Select that and that, make around that line so we have all holes like that now let's click finish sketch and let's use this sketch and use the holes feature now you have the holes feature you can define the hole diameter 
like that and make it uh, through all. So the hole will be through all. And now let's click Save. Now you have the holes are better on that plate. Now let's click on Save and save the final assembly of that one. Now let's go to the uh, next nozzle. Now we create N4. Let's go to N5. We have N5 here. It's located on CAN4. OK. So let's select CAN4. And uh, as you can see, uh, the nozzle in four with internal and ex in the five, sorry, it's with internal and external uh, projection. And uh, let's check the uh, information of N5. It's from pipe, six inches with a schedule X strong. OK, so it's uh, air souring inlet. So let's come back here and define the uh, information of this one. So from here, let's select CAN4 and add the nozzle with internal and external projection. So it's in the five and five. Four in the five, let's select it as a pipe. From here, define the size. It's six inches with a schedule X strong. And the location of this one, we can calculate it from here. So the location is eight. 365 and let's reduce the decrease the value of straight flange and decrease the value of the first course second course and third course now we have the location of this nozzle so we can get it directly here okay and let's define the orientation of this one it's on 180 degree and let's add a rebad the rebad is 16 millimeters thickness, 16 thickness. Uh, here, the surface of this one is air. And here for the internal projection, if we take a look for the internal projection, the internal projection measured from here, it's uh, 68 from the shell outside diameter. So we need to decrease 16. So the inside projection is 52. So let's come back here and define the inside projection as 52. And now let's click Save. Now let's add an external connected flange. So from flanges, let's add N5, F1. Find the size of this one as type as uh, Wildenick wilderness face, size as uh, six inches nozzle, sorry, six inches, not eight. With a schedule X strong, let's click on save. And for the inlet, it's in 5F2. It will be the same with in 5F1. Okay, no need to repeat information again. Now, when you click on start simply, you will create in 5 uh, nozzle. Uh, we need to calculate the projection of this nozzle because we didn't define it. Uh, we didn't import it in SCG. So let's come back here. Here the projection is 1,666. Uh, so let's come back to uh, SCG and open the uh, calculator of this nozzle and define the projection. Okay, and calculate the required projection. You can figure that it's uh, 61 instead of 300. So let's click save to reflect the value here. And let's add another nozzle, which is N6. We have N6, which is located on CAN2. From here, let's select CAN2 and create a nozzle with internal projection, which is N6. And for N6, let's make it looks like N5. It's the same information. After that, we will change the service and location if needed. And let's add. Uh, let's add an external flange for N6, so N6 F1 and N6 F2, N6 F2. Let's change the size. Uh, sorry, make it looks like 
in the five flanges. Okay, after that, let's select N6 and define the location of this one. So the location of this one located at uh, 2635, uh, and let's increase the straight flange and so the location of this one will be 625. Be like that, and click on save. Now, if we uh, click on uh, start as simply, we will update. Uh, first, we will generate in six. After that, generate uh, update in five because it's located on the tree after in uh, six. So the in six will be created first. After that, uh, the updating of the projection for uh, N5. Okay, now we have those nozzles created at the top of the uh, bottom of the vessel with an internal flanges like that. And now let's go to the next step to create a nozzle N7. So let's check what is N7. N7 located on the first can. Okay, it's with applying the flange. So let's check the nozzle N7 detail here. Here we have nozzle N7. And the nozzle N7 is a chemical uh, Closing and let's define the size. It's two inches, 160. So let's select can one from here. And this nozzle was external projection only. So let's select this type, which is pipe, two inches, 160. Scribble. And the location will be like that. The orientation at zero degree, no reinforcing pads. And the uh, name or the service of this one. And we click on save. Now let's add a flange to this one. So let's select this external connection, and from here, let's add in the seven flange. Find the size of this flange as two inches. This is schedule 160. And let's come back to Mizzle N7 to uh, edit the projection. So from here, let's check the projection of this nozzle, 2125. So and calculate, now click on save. We have the projection calculated automatically for this nozzle. Let's create this nozzle. As you can see, this nozzle has a gasket and blind flange, and we need to add a stiffening grip to this one, to this uh, nozzle. So we will uh, use, after creating this nozzle, we will add a gasket and a blind flange to this nozzle. After that, add a rib. From here, let's select the external connection of nozzle N7. And from elements, let's add gasket. So N7. Select the type to be a raised face according to ASME and select the size two inches, the same rating. And for the blind, let's select in seven blind. Select the size to be according to the ASME B16.5. Select the size and make the facing of this uh, cover uh, flipped to make it uh, on the side of the gasket not to top, so we need to flip it, like what we did in on the head. Now when you create this gasket uh, and uh, flange, you will get the uh, final part at the top of this nozzle. Now we will uh, create the uh, support ribs for this nozzle. Now we have this nozzle like that. As you can see, it's with a small diameter and uh, a long length, so we need to stiffening, make a stiffening for it. Uh, so from here, let's 
open SCG and let's select the CAN one. And from here, let's open uh, the external attachment tab and you can figure that you have the ability to add nozzle support trip. Okay, so nozzle support trip, let's add in the setting. Support trip. Okay, and from here, you can select between different types, some of them for the helicide nozzles with elbow like that, with a single rib or with a double rib. Uh, for our case, we we have that case. So let's define the outside diameter of the pipe. It's two inches. So this will be correct. The rib width is 50 millimeters as there's a drawing here, which is item in the 73, which is a rib with 50 millimeters the thickness. Okay. okay. And the thickness of this one is 10. So let's change that one. The rib angle is 30. The location of uh, this rib, it should be the same location of uh, the, the nozzle. Okay, the orientation, the same orientation of the nozzle. And here for uh, the rib offset and the projection, we need to check the projection of the nozzle first. So let's come back, save and come back to the nozzle and get the projection from here. And put the projection in that value. And the offset from the top, let's make it. 200 millimeters. Now let's make this rib uh, on that side, and you can figure that if you would like to add the rib on that side, which is rib three or rib four, we, we will select rib four on that side and make the angle of this rib like that and the offset to 100 millimeters, the same for the first one. Here you can figure that you can control the offset and uh, angle for each rib. If you, if you have a case, you would like to change the uh, angle of this one. Let's see what you would like to say. Here's the offset of uh, the line. Start from here. So you define the projection of the nozzle. Okay, and the offset of the rib, you can define it. So the offset defined it by here. So for one rib, you can make the offset at here and another one, you can make it at there. So you can, for each rib, you can control the offset from the end of the pipe. The same for the angle. You can control the angle here for each one. So you can change this value for each rib. Here you have those values here, which is the rib offset and angle, uh, the offset and angle. And here the angle and offset for the first one. The same if you have another, you have rib angle and offset. Okay, now let's click on save and start creating this stiffening rib for this nozzle. <coughs> So we have the ribs will be on that side. If you would like to uh, reverse the direction of that rib to the other side, you may need to select other side to flip the main uh, rib to the other side. OK, now let's uh, add another nozzle. Uh, now it's a nozzle in seven. So here we have nozzle in seven and here nozzle in eight. OK. And if we take a look to the bottom view here, you can figure that nozzle N9 and N8, uh, they are with an offset with 40 millimeter from the visual center line. Okay, on the uh, clockwise direction, here we have a zero and 90 degree. So it's on the uh, clockwise direction. So uh, let's come back up here, nozzle N, Nozzle N8, it's located on CAN 4. OK, so let's select CAN 4. Let's come back down here and select CAN 4. And from CAN 4, let's select uh, create a nozzle with external projection only. So let's check that. It's in yes, this one, in 8 and in 9. It's with external projection only. And to check the information of this nozzle, it's a seamless pipe three inches with 160 schedule. So, okay, let's come back here and define this nozzle. So, uh, after selecting a CAN4, let's add a nozzle as N8, N8, click save. Now we have 
on this N8, it's a pipe nozzle. And from here, let's select the size as a three inches with a schedule 160. Okay, the location of uh, this one from the seam line of the vessel will be like that. It's in zero degree. It, uh, it, ha it has a, a rebad with 16 millimeters and thickness 16. And uh, the service <coughs> of this one is, check that, it's a node uh, monitoring system. And let's click on save. <clears throat> now let's add a flange to this nozzle to define the projection of this one. Uh, before going to this step, first, this nozzle uh, is, is not a radial nozzle, it's a helicide nozzle. So let's remove this uh, option, which is radial, and make it helicide, and define the offset as uh, 400 millimeters, and keep the offset direction in clockwise direction and click on save. Now it's Add a flange, so let's select external connection and a N1 flange. From here, select the type of the flange, select size and schedule. After that, click on save. Now, when you come back again to the nozzle, you will be able to define the projection of this one. So the projection is 2125. Click on calculate. Now the projection will be appear here. Now you can click save to reflect it. To this four. Okay, as you can see here uh, on that one, we have the projection of this nozzle uh, like that. Okay, now let's add some other attachments like this uh, gasket cover and this clips, and let's discuss how to add the coupling. Now, from here, let's uh, uh, let's add a gasket at the end of this nozzle. So from here, let's add a gasket in three inches. Okay, select the type to suit the ASME. After that, let's add a cover in mind. Select the type of the blind here. For that, select the size and flip the, the flange direction. After creating the flange, you can select the flange from here, and you can figure that you have the ability to add some other attachments like lifting lugs. We can use one of those as a clip, which appears here. That one. So let's uh, add uh, one of those, like in cover clip or blind clip. Okay, and let's increase this window a little bit. And from here, select this clip and define the dimensions of this one. So uh, this item is uh, item number eight. So let's select this one. So the width is 80, height is 150, thickness is 16. So the dimension A is uh, 80. The thickness is 16 and the bin hole diameter. Let's make it 10 millimeters right now. After that, we will remove it. The chamfer is zero and the whole offset dimension L. Let's make it 100 and that one. So the summation of them will be 150, which is dimension L and R. After that, the orientation keep it zero, changes the material of this lifting lug. Uh, so we can open it from here. Select the grade. After that, click done to import the material here. And now click on save. If we click on uh, start assembly, we will generate this nozzle with the uh, cover, uh, flange, gasket, and the cover. After that, over the cover, we have a lug.
now we have this eclipse and uh, as mentioned you can make a modification on it like uh, the modifications that we did on this plate after creating it from SCG for example you can open it like that and directly go to the uh, modification uh, level and click on the extrude feature and select this hole like that to remove it to select the whole feature so no holes inside this part and now you can save it and if we uh, take a look to the uh, the general arrangement view you can figure that this clip is, is rotated it's not on that direction okay so you can figure it takes the same orientation on the elevation and uh, side view so it should, uh, here it should be uh, on the other side or one of them it should be uh, perpendicular and all the on the other drawing it should be uh, vertical but it and same times and two times it same thing with this a beer with the same thickness but here uh, if you take a look to the 3d model here it's a beer on that with that thickness but from the other side it will appear with that thickness so let's check the orientation of, of this one if it's uh, located like that here or not so uh, from the drawing detail here it's uh, on that side so uh, perpendicular to the circumference okay so it's not like that on the 3d model so uh, when we take a look it should be rotated with 90 degrees so let's come back here and change the orientation to 90 degree and click on save now if you uh, click on start the orientation of this clip will be rotated on the uh, on the body flange so it will be like that so when you Take a look from the side view, you will get that view. And from that view, you will get it uh, like that. And the projection will be an actual projection. I think it's on the AutoCAD drawing, it not appears on the uh, actual value. It seems a bit small, it's 150. It's not uh, the same that it appears here. OK, now let's uh, check how to make the coupling inside uh, this body flange. On the first session of SCG software, we discuss how to move the UCS from point to another by using gap or overlap and flip and shift. Okay, we have different options to move the UCS from this one. For the blind flange, the end UCS will be at the top here. We need to move it down here. Okay, to make the coupling inside the body flange. So to make that. Let's select the uh, body flange. After that, let's add after the body flange. Let's add after the body flange. Let's add uh, Bart as a gap. After that, we will select the uh, uh, the type of this gap, if it's uh, overlap or gap or shift or flip. So from here, let's insert this part first. Let's name it as a coupling gap. Okay. And from here, when you select uh, the coupling uh, gap, you can define the overlap of it. So that means you will move down, okay, inside the flange, or by defining the gap, you will make it at top. So let's let's check that to check the uh, location of the UCS and the values that we need. Okay, here if we, uh, so we need to know the uh, gap, uh, the height of this uh, of this coupling to move. Let's make a print screen and that. Now we are standing on this point, okay, as the end UCS. We are standing here. Let's increase this a little bit. We are standing here. So we need to move this UCS down here at this level, okay, to start creating the coupling. So coupling will be on that direction. So uh, at first, let's measure the uh, uh, the cover flange thickness. So from inspect, let's measure the thickness up to the facing. Here we have uh, twenty four point three. So let's make make this gap as uh, twenty four point three, and let's uh, add a little bit more twenty millimeters. Okay. So from here, let's make it forty four point three. To check the uh, UCS location 
where it will be comes. It's now we we have the uh, the the this new item appear here on the tree, but it's not as mentioned. It's not uh, not a real part. Now you can figure that the end UCS moved up here. That means we need to use the overlap, not the gap direction, to overlap this point to make it down here. So in that case, we need to make it overlap and define the uh, offset like that. In that case, now you we have the ability to add a coupling. So from here, let's add a coupling, which is uh, coupling, half coupling one, half coupling. And now let's define the size of this coupling. Uh, so let's check the uh, it's item number ten. So item number ten here it's one inch. Uh, the rating is three thousand. So from here let's come back to SCG and select the rating. Select the size as one inch and uh, no gap. Okay, uh, that's the gap for connection. If we have a connected pipe, so let's. From here, let's click on save. Now, if we take a half section here, sorry, after creating the coupling, let's discuss what could we do. From here, let's open the view and let's take a half section along this one with offset 400 millimeter, which is the offset of the nozzle. And we have this one. Now we have this coupling like that, and we can increase the offset a little bit. So we need to increase this value. So we need to measure the value from here to the end of this one. From here to there. Okay, for that surface. Sorry, not to that one. Let's measure from here. To the top of the coupling, so we need to increase this value. So let's come back to coupling and increase this value. So it will be uh, six eight like that. Save. Now we start simply to create this one. Okay, now uh, let's uh, go to another uh, part. Now we have this one will be like that. Let's remove the section and go to another uh, nozzle. If we open the uh, AutoCAD drawing here, we will find nozzle N9. It looks like nozzle N8, but it's located on another can. It's located on can two, the second can. So from here, let's select uh, in can two and add nozzle in nine. Okay, and for in nine, let's make it looks like in eight. Okay, and let's select the uh, external connection point for N9 and let's add a flange so N9 flange N9 gasket after that we will make it looks like the other N9 gasket N9 blind okay that let's add a blind clip like that and main clip and here let's add a gap so it's a coupling two or in the nine coupling okay, 
so in this connection it will be looks like the coupling cap connection after that let's add the uh, coupling from here let's add coupling so it's a uh, half coupling too yeah. adding it we can modify that so from n9 let's make it looks like n8 flange and for the gasket the same with n8 gasket blind the same and for the uh, let's add uh, sorry again let's add this item which is n9 uh, it's like an eight clip and for this one we defined it and for the coupling we need to define it to be like that now when we start creating the second nozzle we need to define the location of this one uh, we keep it as it is so it's calculated from here it's 2400 minus 50 minus 1 Okay. The location of this nozzle on uh, 390, so we need to modify the location of this one. So we can stop the assembly. After clicking the stop, uh, SEG will end the current task and uh, stop uh, modeling. Click on stop. Okay, now if we come back, you can figure that it's stopped. So let's come back to this nozzle and modify the location. And save. Now let's start the assembly again. Start creating this nozzle. Now, after uh, creating the uh, items, we, we will need to modify the hole here on that part. So let's open it. And the same thing we will do by uh, modifying the feature itself by removing this hole from the sketch. So we need to come close and select the hole and click on Save. Now we have the clip without any holes. Okay, now uh, let's create uh, the manholes on the shell. We have two manholes here. If we take a look, we have manhole M1A located here and manhole uh, 1B located there. This one located on the second can. So from here, let's go to the CEG and from the three, let's select the can two and select the nozzle uh, without internal projection with external projection only and let's add m1a save now we have this nozzle if we take a look to this nozzle drawing let's close this one and open m1a drawing here we have uh, this nozzle as a heli side nozzle with that offset here's the projection and let's check the uh, the component of this one it's uh, 24 inches and the neck of this one uh, it's from plate okay so let's select this type to be a nozzle from plate define the outside diameter the thickness the building line orientation gap and location so let's check the location so to calculate the location here So that's the location of this manhole. And the orientation at zero. Let's keep the projection as it is. The uh, services man way. And we have a rebad, a rebad which is, the sickness is 16. And now let's click save. And let's add uh, a flange to this one. So M1A. 
and here let's select the type schedule uh, rating size and schedule so here if we take a look it's uh, it's not without it's uh, without schedule it's with a defined thickness 16 millimeters so we need to remove this checkbox I selected this checkbox to give you uh, an access to define the thickness of uh, the end the end thickness of the flange instead of scribble so you will select this checkbox and select the thickness to be 16 and click on save now let's add uh, let's define this nozzle uh, we forget to define something for this nozzle because this nozzle as mentioned it's a heli side nozzle it's not at the uh, center it's not radial so we need to define this offset it's uh, 525 from the center line so let's select remove the radial and select helicide option define the offset value and for the offset direction if we take a look to the indication uh, view for this one okay the manhole it's uh, at zero degree but it's in counterclockwise if we go clockwise in that direction from zero to 90 it's on the other direction in uh, between uh, zero and 2070 so let's select counterclockwise and click on save now to cl uh, calculate the projection of this nozzle let's define the projection and click on calculate to calculate the projection of the pipe uh, without uh, flange here the projection of this pipe calculated here let's add a gasket and line so from here let's add m1a gasket And define the uh, the size. And for the blind, let's select M1A blind. From here, select the type of the blind. Define the size, and make it flipped. Click on save. Now let's uh, create uh, this manhole. From assembly, click on simply to start creating this manhole. Okay, now we have the uh, first manhole at the top. You can see it's a heli side nozzle. <coughs> now let's add the second manhole. <coughs> now from here, let's check the location of the second manhole. It's located on the third can. Okay, so let's check that from here. So let's select can three. And from elements, let's add uh, M one A uh, B sorry M one B and we will make it looks like M one A okay uh, but don't forget to ch change the location and from here let's select external connection and add M one B flange and add basket M one B basket M one B by the way, you can add a groups to avoid repeating items, and we could discuss that on a separate uh, tutorial. Uh, how to make a copy, a copy from group uh, to, uh, if you have, let's say, uh, a list of items like that. We have nine in the nine and uh, some sub items. You would like to take a copy from all of this group on another place. You can do that by using group options, but there is some constraints for making that and. Uh, to know that, we already have a tutorial video for uh, for group options, okay, where, uh, which is that video. You can watch this video to uh, know the options of uh, grouping, how to create a group, how to copy a group, delete a group, or delete the content of the group. All of that, you can deal with it from here. Okay, let's complete the nozzle in 
B. Let's add a cover M1 B. Find. But let's find the uh, each one of those. It looks like M1 A uh, flange. Okay. And for the gasket, it looks like M1 A gasket. And the blind, it's the same with M1 A gasket. Uh, blind, sorry. Okay, now uh, let's come back to nozzle M1 and change the location of M1. So if we open the drawing here, we have the location. That one is 7550. 16 minus. It will be uh, that's the location of the new one of M1B. So let's calculate it again. Sorry, I think I missed something. It's uh, we have that one. I think it's okay. So let's take a copy from this one, or let's calculate it again. Uh, so uh, seven zero minus two minus the first course length minus the second course. Yes, so five zero minus fifty minus so that's the location of this nozzle. So let's take a copy from this one and locate it here and click on save. Now let's create this manhole. Let's come back to Autodesk Inventor. Okay, now we have uh, the two manholes here, and you can figure that the location of this manhole uh, makes the reinforced bed over uh, uh, seam line being CAN4 and the CAN3. Okay, and you can get it that easily from the uh, 3D model. And the same here, you can figure that this uh, area is a little bit uh, close, so you can measure the uh, for example, if you would like to measure the value from here to there, the nearest value is 49 millimeters. After making groove or, uh, here on the shell and on the nozzle, it may be close to 20 millimeters or less. So you can decide that you can, you can increase the uh, course length or you can change the nozzle location. So from on the 3D model, you can decide if you have any clashes or or not. Now let's uh, create one more nozzle. If we come back here, you, we will find that we have a manhole on the left head. Okay, so from here, let's select the left head. And from elements, let's add a nozzle. But before that, let's uh, check this nozzle uh, information. Let's close the, the first manhole detail and let's open M2 detail. Here, if we take a look to the uh, Bluff material, it's uh, 30 inches flange, series A, and here the rating, and it's from plate, and the thickness of the flange was in the thickness 16. It's uh, So from here, let's create a nozzle with external projection only as M2. And for M2, we will define it as a nozzle from pipe, but the size will be 30 millimeters and uh, with in the thickness 16 millimeters. Uh, sorry, it's a pipe, sorry, sorry. It's a nozzle from pipe, not from blade. And let's define the outside diameter of this one like that. The thickness is 16 and keep the longitudinal building line orientation as it is. And for the offset, it will be at zero, orientation at zero. 
for the rebag, the rebag was 320, the sickness will be 16, and the service will be manual. And uh, it will be barrel and seat on. Now let's add a flange for M2. Let's select external connection, and from here let's add M2 flange. And let's define the size of this was a type of flange M2 here. So let's select uh, according to as maybe 16.47 series A and select the size as 30. Define the end thickness to be 16, not a standard description. Press that click on save. Now let's add a gasket. So from here, select external connection and select M2 gasket. And the size. According to series A, select size to be 30. Click on save. Now let's add a blind M2 blind. Okay, select the blind and select the type size and make it flipped. Now let's click on save. Now let's run the simply to create this nozzle. 3D model. Now, as you can see, we um, done uh, all of the uh, nozzles. Now we need to check some of the uh, internals, like internal supports. After that, the piping uh, or the internal piping, how we can deal with that. After that, finally, we will check how to make the accessories like stud bolts, davids, the accessories for manhole. Uh, before preparing uh, or adding the stud bolts and davits, we will need to discuss an important point regarding drawings. Here, if you would like to make a, a separate drawing for the manhole, and this drawing will include the bill of material of this manhole and the davit. So you need to prepare a group like what we did in this saddle. Here inside this saddle, for this saddle, we make a group. If, you, if we check, the three again for SEV. You can figure that if we decrease this one here. We have a group here, which is first saddle. Inside this group, we add fixed saddle and ring one. And here for the second saddle group, we may add saddle and ring two, sliding saddle and ring two. The same thing, we, we could do it for uh, the nozzles here. For, for example, here you, you would like to prepare a drawing for uh, this nozzle, a separate drawing for this nozzle, which is uh, nozzle in, uh, let's say, seven, for example. Yes, it's a nozzle in the seven. So here you will need to include this nozzle with that flange with the gasket and the blind and ribs in one group. So, for example, here for N7, if you would like to import those inside one group, you to be a a drawing, you will need to make a group like that and add grouping. And from here, let's add N7 detail, for example. And that is the name of the group. And from here, you will select the group start from N7. OK, so the first node will be N7. And the last point will be the support. So the support will be included inside that group. And when you click Finish or Save Group, OK, SEG will uh, create a new group uh, with, the, with, the, with that name, which is uh, N7 Detail, as you can see. Here you will get a group here, which is N7 detail, and you will need to update this group by clicking on start to rearrange the elements inside this group. <clears throat> now, uh, if you if you check that, if you if we open this uh, three here and take a print screen to to take a close look for that, here you can figure that you have a new assembly here named N7, N7 detail, and this detail includes the, as you can see, it's include the N7, okay, N7 flange, N7 gasket, blind, and ribs. So here, if you would like to prepare a drawing for this nose with a detailed bill of material, you can do that. So you should uh, think about the drawing before making group, groups, because groups will give you the ability to prepare a drawing with a separate bill of material. Now let's go ahead and complete the, uh, 
the other internal supports for this vessel. Here we have the uh, outside uh, elements of the vessel. And we, uh, so the first step, inshallah, we will uh, do it by creating the internals inside this vessel. After that, making the internal piping, inshallah. Uh, after that, we will discuss how to add uh, external elements to the model. Like for the saddle, we have some uh, sliding blades here on the slide saddle, like Teflon and some other uh, shims blade. So we need to, uh, how to import them, how to add uh, a grounding lug to the uh, saddle. So we will uh, discuss that uh, step by step, inshallah. So first, let's uh, add the uh, internal. So let's close the, the manhole detail here. And let's uh, open the internals. Now we have some internals inside this vessel. Let's open another uh, detail for uh, a view. Here, as you can see, we have internals here as a uh, flipped angle, which uh, carry or uh, carry this pipe, uh, this deep pipe here, and another one there. So the configuration for those are the same, but this one is a little bit uh, different. So let's create uh, the those uh, shapes. And from here, let's select can one. And from can one, let's open the elements. And from the internal elements, you can figure that you have uh, a type here called cross beam, uh, cross support beam. So let's add the first one, which is IPS. Is the last one, I think, near the uh, right head. The first one here, which is that one. So let's check this drawing which is that one. Okay, and to check the location of this one, it's here, here. Okay, so we need to decrease this value with 50 millimeters, which is a straight flange. Don't forget forget this important point. And from here, let's select this cross beam. And you can figure that you have different types of cross beams. One of them is with uh, support clips like that. But all of them not include a uh, reinforced bed, okay? And that's an option. So if you would like to include a uh, reinforced bed uh, to the supports like that, kindly uh, raise a request to uh, SEG development team to update or upgrade this type of supports to include a reinforced bed to make it an option for uh, those type of uh, cross beams. Right now, this cross beam was out. Uh, reinforce it bad. So let's uh, complete uh, this uh, part. From here, let's select the uh, the support type. After that, select the size. Okay, and from here, define the location. So we have the location here. So let's decrease it with uh, 50 millimeters. So it will be like that. And the orientation. Uh, keep it at zero right now to check it if it's uh, okay or not. And the offset of this one from visual center line. So let's check this drawing. Here we have uh, that one, which is uh, from SCB 11 up to SCB 02. Here, uh, the offset defined it from the top, it's 296. And the half diameter of the visual, it's 150 millimeters. So if we decrease this value, which is 296, uh, we have that offset. So that's the offset from the visual center line that we need to define it in SCG, which is the offset from the center line. And the uh, axial orientation, let's keep it at zero right now and click on save. Now let's uh, create this part and check the direction of this support, uh, how it comes. Okay, now let's take, take a section along this vessel. So from here, let's select, create a new half section. Select this face like that. So we have this angle, it will be like that. And the edge will be goes to inside. Now we have this support angle will be on that direction. I think it suits uh, what we need. So let's check this. 
I think it's okay. So uh, let's uh, go ahead with the uh, next one. So from here, let's add uh, SCB 10. So from here, let's select internal and cross beam IBS. Okay, let's make it like the previous one. After that, let's create them all and change the location in one time. So from here, let's select that one and cross beam. So IPS09. The next one. Select can and IPS. Now let's change the uh, location of each one. So it's uh, for uh, the tin. It will be like that. See, if we take a look, we will need to sum those values and uh, decrease uh, 50 millimeters length. After that, those values like that. So let's complete the locations. From here, let's change this location to be 733 and save. Second one. 3783, save. Next one, it's 7883, save. Next one, it's 6 p eight zero thirteen. It's minus three. The last one, which is nine seven seven three. Okay. So we have those cross beams. We still have one more at the end, which is that one. And the location of that one at the bottom, not at the top like those. So the location of this one at the bottom. So if we take a look to the detailed drawing of this one, here we have the offset of this one. As uh, as mentioned, when we calculate the other offset, we have the vessel inside radius 150. And to, let's decrease this value. So that's the uh, offset from visual center line for this support. So let's add a new, a new uh, support, which is IBS, IBS uh, one, and that one. And we will make some modifications on this one. So the location will be uh, located on that position, and the offset will be as we calculate here, which is that value, 798. Now, one more thing, which is uh, here for, uh, for this one, you can figure that the straight edge here on the top, not at the bottom like that. Here, the straight edge at the bottom, but here at the top. So we need to rotate this one around the X by 100 and degrees 
And now let's click on start simply to start creating the model. Okay, now let's take a look uh, uh, on the drawing uh, until the creation done. We have another uh, support at bottom here. So no need to, to repeat them again, but we, we, we get the concept of adding clips like this. Now let's proceed with adding internals uh, to uh, the 3D model. Actually, the details here does not appear clearly the type of this flange what is this connection? As I can see, I, there is something like reduced the cone or something like that, but is it fitting or something fabricated? It's not clear on drawings. Uh, the clear things, I, I did it without, uh, uh, without going to uh, another place. But for here, let's make it as, uh, let's say here as, slip on flange with a pipe after that a reducer with another pipe so from here we have uh, on uh, let's uh, remove the section and make the half section here along the vessel like that so you can figure that you have the cross beams like that and the last one it will be here by that way okay now we have those cross beams inside the Vizzle. Now let's add the internals to the flange. This nozzle, which is the first nozzle in one on the uh, top head. So from the tree, let's come up here and select nozzle in one. Okay, and for the internal, let's take a print screen. I'll show you the construction now. We have in one here, and we would like to add uh, elements to this flange. We would like to add uh, slip on flange after this one, after that pipe reducer, another pipe with a large diameter. So how we can do that? We discussed that on the first session uh, when we make some uh, connected items. So from internals, let's add uh, elements. And from here, let's add a gasket uh, before uh, adding another uh, flange. So it's one. Here, let's define the gasket to be a rest face with uh, the same size of this flange. So let's check the size first. This flange is 14. Okay, so it's 14. From here, let's select the size to be 14 inches. After that, let's add a, a, a slip on flange. So from here, let's add N1F3. Okay. And Let's make it a slip on flange. So from here, let's select slip on flange, the same rating. And for the schedule, it will be 14. And the offset for the nozzle, let's make it 10 millimeters. And from here, let's make it flipped to make the facing of the flange in the direction of the gasket. So let's click on flip. After that, let's add a pipe. So from internal, let's add N1 pipe 1. Select this pipe and define the size as 14. And the thickness, it's the same thickness of uh, the flange. So let's click on save first and check schedule. It's a schedule 16. So from here, let's select 16 and 
define the length of this pipe. So uh, we could make it uh, 50 millimeter the length uh, right now because the dimensions is, uh, are not clear. So let's make it 50 millimeters and I click on save. Now let's add a reducer. So let's select internal and add in one user one. And this reducer will be a centric reducer. So the large diameter, let's make it 20 and the scribble 60. And for the small diameter, let's make it 14. And uh, here uh, the schedule, let's make it uh, 60. OK, and click on Save. Now let's check if the cone diameter or that size suits the cross beam. That means uh, the cross beam may be uh, not the cross beam, the size that we say, what I select, which is 20, is uh, greater than the required. Because as I mentioned, no, no, no detail for the internal, but here I would like to uh, make a complete detailing for uh, the, pipe, the internal piping. So I will check if that size is uh, huge or we need to decrease it a little bit. Okay, so here we need to uh, flip the uh, cone direction. So from here, as you can see, if we take a section along this cone here, let's take a section like that at the end of the cone, we can figure that the size of the cone is will intersect with this one. So we need to decrease it a little bit. So from here, let's decrease it to 18 and uh, sorry, and flip the direction of the cone. And now let's start the assembly and the check the, uh, the size now for the larger size, if it's OK or not. Now I think it's a little bit suits this one and we could decrease it to 16. OK, 16 by 14 and click on save. Now let's click start date. The reducer. Now I think the reducer size is OK. So 16 is OK. It's match it with the cross beam up and down. OK, now let's take a section along the vessel like that. Here, so we have uh, reduced the cone at this area. Let's add an extended pipe up to the end. So from here, let's select the internal and from elements, let's add a pipe. So N1 pipe, pipe uh, 2, OK, and Let's make it looks like N1 by 1. After that, we will increase the size to 16. OK, so we could increase the size to 16. After that, keep the schedule. But the lens, let's make it uh, with a little bit longer size. So from here, let's measure from the surface up to the end here. So we need 10 meters and let's say 400, so 10 meters and 400. But the pipe length. After that, let's add a cab at the end. Here is this drawing. We have a cab at the end. OK, so let's add this cab. Sorry, let's come here and from here, let's add uh, a cab. So from uh, head, let's add N1 in the cab. And let's select this cap from here and select a standard cap as a fitting. Define the size, which is 16, the same scribble, and uh, flip the direction of this cap and click on Save. Now when you click Start Simply, you will get this pipe. After that, uh, the end cap for this pipe. OK, now we have uh, uh, that for a, a nozzle N1. Uh, the same thing, we will do it with uh, N2. OK, so we can add uh, uh, items after that makes the same, make them same as those items. OK, and you can add uh, connecting bolts, all of that. But right now, let's make that at the last step after creating the main uh, visual components. So from here, let's select, uh, sorry, for N2, let's select the internal 
connection point for nozzle N2, and let's add a gasket. So from here, let's add N2 gasket. That let's add a flange. So N2 flange. Okay. That let's add a pipe. So it will be N pipe one. That a reducer. So in two, in reducer one. That in uh, in the two wipe two in wipe. <clears throat> but that in the cap in the two in the cap. Here let's select in in. Now let's make items looks like the other items. So from here, let's select N2 gasket. And from this list, let's select N1 gasket. Okay. And for the N2 F3, let's make it looks like N1 F3. And for uh, N2 uh, pipe, let's select uh, N1 pipe one which is that one after that n2 uh, reducer let's make it looks like n1 reducer pipe two n1 pipe two and finally the cap here we have this cap so it looks like the uh, n1 in the cap now we we make those items looks like the previous item. Let's take a look down here. If you can see here we have a pipe reducer, another pipe, but this pipe not comes to the end. It's stopped here, and we have here a T, a connected T before the uh, uh, before uh, the end cap, which is we make it as the end. So let's check that how we can. Uh, do it so let's delete this in the cap right now or we can keep it let's uh, let's remove it okay no problem let's remove it and now let's start the assembly and from here we will modify the length of the uh, this pipe which is 16 inches a pipe okay and we will add uh, a t here and this t uh, could be include the uh, a branch here for uh, this nozzle and for uh, this nozzle which is in six let's add some internals like adding a slip on flange with a pipe after that uh, add uh, a t here so let's come back to the 3d model so i think this pipe uh, i need to to uh, modify it again which is in uh, in two by one it should be if we open this one which is in two by one it should be 14 millimeters and the lens will be 15 millimeters okay so i think it, it will be like that let's check this one okay so after updating it it will make sense Okay, now we have this one like that. We need to decrease the length of this pipe a little bit. So let's come back here. And for N2 pipe 2, let's decrease the length. Let's make it one meter right now up on, until updating the uh, T connection here. So we have on N6, let's add uh, internals here. And uh, let's check if we have uh, a T with that size, which is suits in the sexual size and uh, 16 inches as the main pipe. Let's check that first. So let's come to N6. So that's N6. And for the internal connection here, let's add a gasket. So N6 in, in gasket. Here. And let's check the uh, N6 dimensions. It's 6 inches, X strong. Okay, so from here, it's 
six inches. Okay, with a six X strong rating. Let's add a, a slip on flange here. So in three and change the size to be slip on select size and select the offset. After that, let's add, uh, let's say a pipe before before the T, let's add a straight pipe here. Okay, after that, let's add a T. So let's add uh, N X pipe one. Okay, rating is X strong, so it's six inches with X strong, six inches with X strong rating, and let's make the lenses 100. After that, let's connect a T from branch to this one. Here, let's add a T. So N T. And for this T, let's make it a reduced T, not an equal T. And make the size, large size as 16. And schedule 60. And for the low size, small size, it's six inches with X strong. And now let's click on save. Okay. Now when we click create, uh, so we will need to adjust the orientation of this T and adjust the length of this pipe to suit the extended pipe, uh, which is that one. So after creating it, we will need to make adjustment for that to make it uh, uh, in the same uh, level. So let's wait until until creating. As you can see here, uh, the T, we didn't select connected from branch option. So we need to come back again here. And for the T, we will need to select this option, which is, uh, sorry, which is connected from branch. That option will give you the ability to connect the T from branch to the previous element. Now let's click on start as simply. And now we need to rotate it 90 degrees. So from here, Let's rotate the T with a 90 degree and eight. Okay, now let's check the uh, offset between the two center lines. Let's save this model and let's create a quick drawing for checking to check some points here. Let's take a look from here, change the scale to 40. Okay, and here for the level of that one, we have a center line here and another center line there. So let's check the difference between them. So that's that value. We will need to decrease it on the pipe lens. From here to there, we have 16 millimeters point. So the pipe lens was 100 millimeters. So we need to decrease this value. So the pipe lens will be like that. So let's come back again here. And in SCG, let's decrease the length of this pipe that value. One more thing, let's check it, which is the length of this pipe. So we need to extend this pipe lens with that value. It was one meter, I think. So we need to increase 687.03. So let's come back here and it's in N2, okay, this one. So let's increase this value with six, seven, eight, six, eight, seven, six, eight, seven. Three, and click on save. Now, when you click on start simply, the 3D model will update this, uh, will update the, uh, the pipe uh, which you connected to the reducer. After that, the pipe which is connected to the T to make the center lines so it's each other like that. Okay, now we have this connection. It will be like that inside the vessel. If we come back to the uh, check draw, check in drawing, we can you can figure that the center lines now aligned and the spacing become zero. Now we can add another uh, pipe uh, here inside uh, after uh, this T, and for the same here we can do another. Uh, 
connection to this uh, uh, to this nozzle, which is in uh, five. So let's check uh, in five. What is in five? So we have the internal connection of in five. Let's add a gasket. So here, let's add in five in five gasket. Okay. And let's make it looks like in six gasket from here. Click save. And let's add a, a slip on flange. Okay, so for normal uh, internal, let's add slip on flange. So in five flange three F three. So let's define this one. Make it looks like N six F three. So here N six F three. Click save. Now let's add a pipe after this one. So let's add N five one. It looks like N six pipe one. So it's N six pipe one. After that, let's add a T. So from here, let's add a T. Okay, so it's N five. Now we have this connected T. Let's make it looks like uh, the T six T. And from here, now let's check the uh, options. So it's connected from branch. Now let's create this one. So we will create the internals for uh, N five. Okay, now we create the second uh, internal uh, piping uh, or the second T on the nozzle in five. Now we would like to check uh, something here. Let's go to inside this part and here you have the uh, branch and here you have a end point and uh, here the start point. So from here, let's finish sketch and come up like that. And from the three here, before before going to adding a new item so let's add a pipe here at the end of this t so we need to add a pipe with that lens and another pipe with that lens like that okay so the first pipe will be at the inlet so from here let's select the first inlet and from elements let's add in five pipe two okay and this pipe will be is 16 inches diameter with schedule 60 and the lens will be 5180 5180 and now let's click on save to the assembly so uh, we need to flip uh, the value so here Let's check that. So from here we need to add two three one two two three one two one two point nine seven nine seven three and for the inlet two let's add in the five by three and five three and the lens the size will be 16, schedule 60, and the length of this one will be 5180, 5180, and click on save. Now let's add a cab to after uh, the pipe in the two. We have a pipe here, and uh, we need to add a cab like that here. So from inlet in the two, let's add a cab. So it's N5 in the cab. Then let's select the standard cab, select the size as 16. After that, select schedule and now click on save. Let's make it flipped. 
and that's important make it flipped after that run the simply to create the 3d model and update the item I think the lens I uh, still uh, importing it uh, with a wrong value. I, I think I imported 300 instead of 200 or uh, two, uh, 2000. I imported 3000, so it's 2000, not three. So let's come back to the vibe. Yes, it's not correct. It's two, three. Okay, it's two, three, twelve, two, three. So the lens will be like that. And let's click on a start to update the lens of the this part. Okay, now we make uh, the internal piping. So if you would like to make a holing for uh, the piping like that, you can make the holing on the part itself. For example, we have uh, on this pipe on this long pipe. Let's open this pipe, double click on it. Now we are on the uh, level of detail of this pipe. Let's select one of the origin planes, which is that one. And now let's create a sketch. So from here, click slice graphs and define the, uh, the diameter here. Let's say make it millimeters and the offset for the first hole. Let's make and the offset from here to there, it's 120. For example, now if you click on extrude, you can make extrude cut through all as we discuss the features of extrude. And after creating that, you can make a pattern for that hole along uh, the center line of the bar. So let's select this X. Let's make it 50 holes with the spacing millimeters, for example. So you have holes like that. So when you click finish, you can get a holding on this pipe like that. So after creating that model on, on SEG, you can make some modifications to suit your requirements. Because as you know, all of all of those details, it's very you know, detailed uh, things. At, and uh, it's not all the time uh, with the same uh, dimension. So uh, if you uh, need if you find that you have a need to make something like that, you can do it after creating. Now let's check other uh, some other important things. Now I think we complete most parts. And uh, now let's discuss uh, the other accessories, how to add an earthing lug on the saddle like that. Uh, we will make it by two different ways. Okay, The first way by using SEG itself, after that, by using the helper library of SCG, or the third way by creating it manually, if you would like to create it manually. So from here, let's select can one, for example, and from elements, let's select external attachment. And for here, you will find uh, a, ground, a grounding lug, earthing bows, and fireproofing eclipse. In that case, we need to add a grounding lug. So let's add this one as grounding. And from here, you will find some different types of for uh, the ground lug. Select the suitable shape for your case. In our case, it's uh, I think this one. Okay, and let's open the saddle detail because the dimensions of this one is included there. We have this one like that. The uh, length is 75, width is 75. So let's define the length and width as 75. 75 and the thickness of this one this item, which is EL1. Uh, thickness is ampere here. Earthing lug, it's six millimeters. And here the material is 24, 3.4. So from here, thickness is six millimeters. And the material uh, here, it's 20, 20. 240, uh, 304, so 304, that's the material of the here. We don't have a chamfer, let's check that. We have a chamfer with five millimeters, so let's define the chamfer as five millimeters. And the location, let's uh, add any location, no problem. 
no overall thickness and the whole diameter. Here, the whole diameter is 15. As you can see, we have on this detail two holes instead of one. So after creating this clips, we, we will modify the, uh, the detail of this hole. And the offset is uh, 38. 38 and 7. Now, when you create it, you will find it created on the first shelf. And we need to take a copy from it on uh, the saddle. Before taking a copy, we need to modify it to make it include two holes instead of one hole. Okay, so let's take a look at the top here. We have this clip. So let's open this round plug. Open. Okay, and let's modify the sketch of the holing. So here we have this hole. We need to modify this sketch. Okay, so this hole, we, we will need to make it not vertically with the bottom. We need to make it a little bit here and add another hole on the same level. So let's select them and make it horizontal. And now define the spacing between them based on the detailing here, the spacing between them is 30, okay, 75, yes, 30, and from here to there, it's from here to there, it's 50, so from here to there, it's 50 millimeters. Okay, now we have two holes. Finish. Now make update for the holes and select the second hole, which is that one. Now we have those two holes on the uh, ground plug. Let's click on save and close. Now let's close this one. And from here, let's break the constraints. Here you can figure that for each item created by SCG, here if we remove the uh, section view here, and if you uh, make a move for this part to make it here a little bit so where it is here we have our oh, yes it's uh, located on the first can it's here okay mm -hmm. so that's the earthing log as you can see it's grounded with some constraints it's already created by SEG software as mentioned SEG make the constraints for the item so let's delete this those constraints now this part is free now you can make your own constraints so let's make a new constraints with the saddle so let's move it here define the offset from here to there as a flush or mate so let's 100 millimeters and make it on the base blade with 300 millimeters for example so now you locate the earthing lug on this saddle by that way and you can eat the uh, the other saddle by let's say uh, offset like that and you can add another grounding lug by the same way and add it on SEG. Now let's check another way to import a new item to SEG by using SEG library. From here, if you open uh, SEG, you will find, uh, if you click on new, sorry, if you click on new, you will find a new folder here called SEG items template. Okay. If you select the accessories uh, folder, you will find some other uh, data you can create it by using SEG like base blade with holes, bended tube, circular washer, clips with that shape, another earthing lug, uh, straight tube, uh, spacer, pipe, and for nuts and the tubes, you can find U bolt, uh, stud bolt, nuts, J bolt, and for cross shackle beams, uh, for cross, uh, cross B shackles, you will find some standard cross B shackles. And I would like to check that with the lifting lug to show you how you can check that if, if you can face an issue during lifting process, if the lifting lug uh, suits the shackle size or, or not. Okay, so uh, let's create a new uh, earthing lug by using this library. So from here, let's select this type of uh, clips and let's open it. Okay, and uh, from <coughs> the view tab, Let's open the user interface and open the iLogic browser. Now we will get this browser for the iLogic. And now we have a form. We can modify the clip dimensions from it. 
from here, let's define the length, find the width and the thickness. Here the whole diameter is 15 and the whole offset is 8 and the material is that. And now the chamfer value is 5 millimeters. The same thing we have this clip right now and we need to update the hole. So from here, let's make this like that and let's change the location of this hole. Let's make it from here to there. It, and let's add another hole equal. Make them at the same level. And the offset of this one 15. That one will be 15. Now let's finish this switch. And select the second hole. So from here, let's select the second hole. Now we have this clip. This new clip created by a CG Hilber library. So how to include it in your model? How to include it in your model? Now let's come back to SEG from here and uh, to save it before if you try to save it from here, uh, Autodesk Inventor will, will not respond to you. You will need to save it from SEG itself. So from uh, the assembly tab, you will find it a button like Save active document. When you click on save, you will receive this form and you can create your own part as external parts, which created by you. And from here, let's add it as grounding. Now, after saving it, you can import it to your assembly. So from here, as we discussed on the second and the third or third and fourth uh, uh, days in uh, Autodesk Inventor training course. Here you can import this earthing plug by place. After that, you can make your constraint with the orbit tool to rotate your model like that. Make this face offset from that one was 200 millimeters. And With that, with that face was 150. So by that way, you will be able to add an earthing lug to the model here. So how to include this part in SEG like, like bill of material? Here, if you open the bill of material of this uh, visit, you can figure that the bill of material is calculated automatically for this equipment. And uh, the equipment weights right now up to uh, 25 tons, 0.5. That's the total weight of the equipment. And now you would like to include this grounding lug to the bill of material. You, here, you add this one manually. It's not in SEG or from SEG, so it will not be included unless <clears throat> you uh, add it to SEG library. So to add it, you can add external bill of material from here and select the equipment, which is send the filter, and add the, this one as grounding lug. the technical characteristics it's a plate uh, 75 and 75 times 6 millimeter and the material is say 40 and the weight let's make it 0.1 uh, bar to number let's make it grounding lug part name and bar to number let's make it uh, the same and no remarks. And now click on save. Now you have <clears throat> a new item, an external item. You de describe it uh, in uh, SEG bill of material. So it will appear here on this list. Anytime you would like to make a modification on it, you can select it from here and make update for the item. And when you close this, it will appear at the end of the bill of material. So here you will find the ground the lug, grounding lug appears here. And here you will find the description that. You, uh, OK, now we discuss how to make uh, an item like that by using uh, the external library uh, from uh, SCG. And now let's uh, take a look to this uh, model and discuss how to. Uh, uh, how to uh, add another uh, type like <coughs> the U-bolt, which is connected to this one. If we open the. Uh, 
internal detail. You can figure that you have a detail like that. It's not a U bolt. I thought that it's a U bolt, but it's not a U bolt. It's just a rolled blade. Okay, and you would like to make a connection like that. So in that way, you will need to uh, draw this part uh, manually, like here. Let's create a new part. And from templates, from here, let's select a standard part, or you can make it as a sheet metal part. Sorry. So let's close this one. Or from sheet standard part, you, you can convert it to sheet metal. So if we open the start standard part, you can convert it to sheet metal directly from here. Okay. After that, you can make uh, a sketch for that. So let's make a, a rough sketch for this one. That's let's say that's the inside diameter of uh, the pipe. After that, you have a straight edge here, another one like that. After that, we can define the dimensions, make make those lines equals, and uh, make them aligned like that, and make those equal. Now uh, make this in the same level with that one. Now you can define the inside diameter. So from the 3D model, let's let's measure some dimensions from here. So we have to finish that. Let's take a section view. Now let's measure the outside diameter here. Okay, that's the diameter, 4.406.4. Uh, 4, so let's open that part, find that 4.004, that's right. Yes, divided by two, because that's here are the diameter, but here it's a radius. And the needful uh, length from here to there, we need from here to there, it's uh, sorry. From from this one to the center, it's two zero oh four. From here, there it's zero four millimeters. And now uh, we have to define this value. Let's say one hundred millimeter. And now let's define the uh, sheet metal defaults. Let's make that default and define the thickness of this sheet uh, of this blade. Let's make it 10 millimeters and make the uh, K factor 0.5. Save this, select the material to be steel. Okay, and click on OK. After that, let's select the uh, contour flange to make, to select the contour to make it outside. So it will be to outside like that and make the extension as the two sides with 100 millimeter, for example, it would be like that, in the color to steel. So that we need to make two holes at the top. Steel. Uh, after that, select a point to make those holes on the same level, on horizontal level. Now let's define the offset here, and the offset from there. Now from holes. Click on holes to, to generate the hole as select the holes from here and there. Define the hole diameter as, let's say, 16 millimeters. Now we have this part. Let's save it. To save it, as mentioned, we you need to go to uh, SEG and from assembly, click on Save Active Document and come back here to save this one as clip it. Or 16 inch pipe. Okay. Now, if you open the assembly of the uh, of this one, which is the uh, first uh, cross beam, and try to add the uh, this clip here. Let's make a new constraint. So let's make this one. Flushed with that one. And you will need to make it centered. So by using the uh, origin planes, we have an origin plane here. Let's make it uh, with the, uh, the origin plane of that one. So you will get that one like that. And you can move it left or right. So we need to make 
one more constraint. So from here, let's select that face and make it with that one. If you take a look from here, the angle width is 70 millimeters. So we may need to decrease the width of this one to 70. So instead of 100, let's make 70. And let's come back here. Now, if you click on update, you will get that by that way. Now let's save this. And if you come back to the 3D model, you will get the assembly of this one like that. Now let's add some uh, tightening bolts. Here, an SEG, uh, SEG will help you to, in that, if you open the library of SEG, you will find only the nuts and bolts. You will find some uh, standard bolts and nuts. So from here, let's open this bolt. And from the stud bolt, let's make a UNC bolt, ISO bolt, sorry. And the length of this one, let's make it, keep it as it is. And for the nut offset, Let's measure the thickness that we need from here to there. We need uh, that spacing. So let's define the spacing to be like that. And we find the material of the stud bolt. And now let's save it. To save it, as mentioned, you should go to assembly and click on save document. After that, save that as uh, bolt M14. Okay, and now let's import it to the assembly. So from assembly, let's import. We have two bolts here. And now let's make a new constraints. So make a constraint like that, another constraint on the other side. Okay, now let's add uh, knots. So from here, let's create a new knot from uh, SEG helper. Now let's uh, open that form and change the size to 15 and save this part. So from SEG, click on Save Document. And here you will save that as not M14. Come back again to the assembly here and add the knots. Two knots in each side. So from here, let's select this one. It will be uh, from the top here with uh, seven millimeters offset or eight millimeters offset. Okay. And select this one, the other one. Okay. From the first hole is eight millimeters. And for the second one, it will be like that. So we have this uh, support on, the, uh, on that beam by that way. So in the 3D model, if you open the 3D model, you will have this support like that. By the same way, as mentioned, you can add those items. For example, here, after adding this bolt and whatnot, we need to include that in SEG bill of material. Now we would like to import this part. So we need to get the sheet metal development of this part first to get the total length. So from here, we have the total length of this part. So it's uh, one, two, uh, two, nine. So let's create a new part from SEG bill of material. Let's uh, uh, add a new item. So from here, select the vessel and the quantity we have, uh, let's say we have 11 plates and the description is uh, clip eight. Okay, and from here, the technical characteristics is plate and the length is to as we measure, sorry, as we measure, it's uh, 1,200. Okay, so it's 1,000. Nine, and the material, it's, it's a, and the weight, let's calculate the weight. So from the physical properties, let's get the weight. Here, the weight is six kilograms, 0.7. So from here, let's add the weight six kilograms, 0.7, and the bar name. Let's give it as it is as a default and click on save. Now you have this clip part included on the bill of material, and it will appear here. And if you would like to add the stud bolt and the other uh, nuts, you can add it to SEG library by in the same way. Now let's go to flat batter, and here you, we have the. Uh, the updated uh, 3D model for that one.
Now, if you would like to add uh, bolts and the nuts for uh, four nozzles, here let's select nozzle N7, for example. So from four in a nozzle, N. now let's add the accessories. Now we discuss how to uh, how to make the uh, internals with uh, supports. After that, we discuss how to uh, import the earthing lug, how you can make it from SEG itself, and how you can make it uh, by using the SEG helper, uh, how to uh, create a new part like uh, this support and include it to your uh, model and include it in SEG uh, library. Now let's discuss uh, how to add the other uh, accessories to the model like the uh, stud bolts uh, and uh, David's, all of that. Okay, now let's select nozzle N7. Come down here, right on CAN1. So from here, let's select CAN1. Okay, uh, and here N7. So from N7, let's select the blind of this N7. Okay, and uh, as, as you know, here N7, uh, size is two inches if we open the uh, tray and for the forged flanges bolting material here if we open the bolts you can figure that with the two inches size the size of the bolt is five by eight and the length is 85 for uh, rating 150 so from here, let's add stud bolt. So from elements, let's add N7 stud. Okay. And let's select this stud from here. After that, define the standard, if it's ISO or UNC. And from here, select 5 by 8. The total length is 5. And let's measure the uh, clearance or uh, the knot distance between uh, the flange and the other connected flange. So from inspect, let's measure this value from here to there. Take a copy from this value and put it here. Now let's click on save. We can eat the stud bolt on this group. And now we have this, those bolts as uh, the uh, final accessories for uh, the 3D model. Inshallah, uh, uh, we could uh, discuss the uh, ability to make uh, a separate detailed drawing for uh, each uh, element, like like that. We, we we prepare a drawing. We prepare a group for this nozzle, which include, as you can see. Here inside this group, now we have the nozzle in the seven, nozzle in the seven flange, nozzle in the seven gasket. So we have a group for this nozzle. If you open this group like that, you will find the assembly of this nozzle. It's here. Include all items of this nozzle. So you, we can generate a drawing for this one with a bill of material of, of uh, for uh, this assembly. Inshallah, in detail, بإذن الله تعالى, uh, on the next uh, or the last uh, session, we will discuss uh, drawing preparation for this pressure vessel and uh, the storage tank that we uh, created yesterday with the storage tank uh, team. Uh, uh, so, uh, any questions be before proceeding with the uh, creating the uh, other attachments to uh, this fizzle make the final uh, uh, small things like bolts and uh, davits. Uh, any questions? Hello?
Okay, as mentioned regarding to this question, kindly uh, watch the uh, group uh, options uh, and the group option will uh, give you uh, an answer for this. We could make it with a separate sample, maybe uh, tomorrow morning, inshallah, to show you how to make uh, that because here in this model, we have a huge number of, of items and that will cause uh, maybe increase the and make this simply a little bit slow in assembly. So uh, we could describe or define it, it in detail. And you can, as mentioned, you can watch the uh, group options, how to add a group, a copy group, all of that you can do. Uh, you, you will find it in this video. It's 10 minutes video. So by watching it, inshallah, you can uh, figure out how you can do that. Any other questions? Okay, uh, now let's uh, complete the uh, other uh, details for uh, the other items. Let's uh, remove this uh, section. And now let's add some uh, other uh, uh, bolts and knots for uh, nozzles. By the same way, if, we, if you would like to make a separate uh, detailed drawing for this manway, you should include it as uh, a separate group. So from here we have uh, M1A. So let's go to CAN2. Uh, it's located on CAN2. Yes, that's it. So from here, let's create a group as group option. And from here, let's make uh, M1A. Okay. And let's include it from M1A up to M1A blind. So that's the last one. And let's click on save. OK, now if you if you take a look here, you will find a new folder created here for this group and you will find the those items inside this group. And here in Autodesk inventory configure that you, you have a miss assembly because you will need to make update assembly to give it easy uh, uh, and uh, the uh, an option to update the assembly so after creating any group you should click on start assembly now SEG will assemble the parts to include them in a single uh, group okay now you have the assembly of this nozzle now if you open it like that you will find the all items of this nozzle now uh, included in one assembly. The same thing we will do it with the second nozzle. So from here, from SCG, let's select nozzle uh, N1B, which located on. Uh, okay, you can make search here like M1B, so that one B. Uh, on can three, so it's located on can three. So you can make a new group here. So from group, let's add a new group, M one B. And now let's uh, make a start, make it to start from M one B as a nozzle up to the blind, and click on save. After creating it, you need to click on start to start updating the assembly of this nozzle. OK, now the last uh, nozzle, which is uh, nozzle uh, in uh, the last manhole, which is M1, which is located on the uh, left head. So from here, let's Make a detail for that's a preparation for the next session, inshallah. So from group, let's make add group. So M2 detail. Let's start from M2 up to M2 blind and click on save. And after finishing, we will need to click on start assembly.
Okay, now we need to discuss some other uh, options regarding the uh, tables here in SVG. If you open the tables tab, if you uh, click on a bill of material table, you will find here a list of the items. You can export it in Excel format. So from here, let's export this one uh, to the project location. So let's select the desktop and from here, select the move today and yeah. Now it will be uh, exported if we come here. Let's close this one. Here we have the bill of material list. As you can see, you will get a list of items like that. And if we, let's hide this one. And you can figure that on this list, you will find the uh, the name of the item on uh, SCG tree. For example, here you have two identical ellipsoidal heads. Okay, one of them for the left head. If we take a close view from here, like that one of them for the right head, and the second one for the left head. You have a shell course with that lens, so which is 1960. It's related to can one, and that's the weight of this item. You have three cans here, uh, identical with the same length, with, uh, the, with the same length and thickness and the material. And here it's related to can two, can three, can four. Okay, so for each item here, you will find it uh, stored on the list. We have uh, 80 items up uh, to this point and the total number of items here and the total weight around uh, 26 tons for this equipment. One more thing uh, related to the tables here. Here you will find some other tables like coupling table, nozzle load, and nozzle table. For the coupling table, if you have uh, defined it, coupling as a child, it will appear here on the model. If you have a nozzle load, it will appear here. For example, if we for nozzle N2, if you uh, select this checkbox, which is nozzle load, you will get this form. And from this form, you can define the loads, which is uh, force in direction B, force uh, VC, VL, and here the moments. So you can define those like that. So when you open the nozzle load, you will find that the loads of this nozzle defined in here. So you can export it to your drawings and uh, use it uh, as a table for, uh, for uh, nozzle loads inside your drawing. Uh, another table, which is nozzle uh, table, here inside this table, you will find a huge number of information regarding to each nozzle, like the nozzle tag. For example, here we have nozzle N1, the service of this nozzle as inlet, and the size of nozzle N1. It's defined by outside diameter. It's not a standard pipe. And here the orientation, thickness, the schedule, because it's defined as thickness, no schedule here. And the connected flange class, connected flange, uh, type connected flange facing and here the blind flange if you have a blind flange the internal projection of this nozzle the external projection of this nozzle from vessel center line and here the rebad thickness rebad width and the style of welding here regarding the style of welding you can figure that it's default we didn't make any change here so to make a change here if you select the nozzle in two and from sit weld you will get this form and from this form you can define the configuration of welding. If you would like to make it as a single weld or a double V, single V or double V, so when you change this checkbox, automatically it will change the weld style. From here, if you select single V, you will get this weld style, which is NW7A. It's a standard in SEG. And from here, the uh, no weld, uh, no clad, if you would like to add a clad to the parent element only, you will select this detail. So you can figure that you have a weld clad and weld overlay here. And if you would like to add a clad inside the uh, for the parent element and the child just select this one. In that case, no clad and you can define the values of weld. So we can make it like that and click on save. Now, if you try to open the nozzle loop, Automatically, you will find that the will detail changes and the will styles will uh, values will change here. 
So if you would like to make the weld style appear on the nozzle table, you will need to define the values here. And you can, from the column choices, you can select the required columns that you would like to make it appear and export it to your nozzle. One more table for the flange table. Here you will get a list for flanges in your project. Here, and the sizes, type, rating, and in the thickness for each one, and the scalable. So from this form, you can prepare a, a, a flange order. And for the gaskets, you will get a list of all gaskets in your project. Okay, like that, including the type, rating, and if you have inside diameter or inside diameter in case of non-standard gaskets, so the value will appear here. And for the fitting, if you have a fitting, in our case, we have uh, reducers, two reducers, two T's, and two couplings. So they will appear on the fitting tab. And for uh, pipes, you have a list for uh, the pipes. Finally, the nozzle orientation list. Here you have a list for the nozzle orientation. So each nozzle will appear on this drawing uh, as the orientation. Uh, the last table, it will uh, for uh, the bended tubes. If you have a bended tube as a heat exchanger, you will have a list for location and number of uh, tubes per row. Okay. Uh, now I think we uh, we discuss the points that uh, I need to discuss it uh, today, inshallah. Uh, so any uh, questions? We have uh, 15 minutes for open discussion. If you have any questions, we could discuss it uh, now. And inshallah, tomorrow we will uh, prepare the uh, general arrangement of drawing and fabrication drawings for this equipment. The same, inshallah, with this project. Thanks. And inshallah, uh, uh, we could start the, uh, your questions now. Hello? Any questions? Okay, as you can see, during, uh, let's say, uh, uh, three hours, and during the three hours, we are discussing some uh, features and discuss some PowerPoint options, options in, inside this. PowerPoint, and during that time, we generate this visual. Uh, I think you know uh, exactly how much time you will spend to generate uh, a detailing like that if you are using the traditional way. But as you can see here with SEG, it's uh, so easy to make something like that. All shell courses development unfold together with all nozzles. Uh, as mentioned, we, we discussed this point two times, two times during the last sessions. Uh, the unfold, unfold option, you can do it for a single part only, not for all parts with the attachments. And we describe that because you, you make it or you need to make it because you are using the 2D method. So you, sometimes you will not be able to detect the clash from the drawing. But here you have the 3D model. Okay, so from the 3D model itself, okay, easily you can get if you have a clash with the welding lines, like here, for example, we discussed that you have a clash with this rebad with the longitudinal welding line. We discussed that we have a near area here between this nozzle. Uh, could we wait a mem uh, one minute for Azan? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Regarding to this point, which is the uh, unfold, as discussed, you have the 3D model, and from the 3D model, you can detect if you have any clashes or not. And one more thing, you can send it to your customer, which is exporting a 3D PDF. So by using this option, you will be able to export your model in a 3D uh, PDF format. <clears throat> so the uh, your uh, the owner or your customer can uh, can uh, take this file and measure. <clears throat> check it as a 3D, uh, and if you if you would like to measure uh, some dimensions, he could make that from the 3D model of uh, the equipment, because this model includes uh, uh, a lot of items. It will takes let's say one minute or one and a half minute to export the uh, 3D model as PDF. So, any other questions during the exporting of the PDF? After that, I will show you, inshallah, how to measure the distance. Or dimensions from them this point. Any other questions? Okay, here is a 3D model. We need to uh, make the sorry, let's uh, change the default view from here first. Which is a default view. Update it because it's inside the vessel and make it like that. Click on save. Now let's export so to be the default view. Okay, any any questions? Lifting lug and tailing lug in vertical vessels can be linked. Uh, no, you will need to define the orientation of the tailing lug and make it perpendicular to the value of the uh, lifting lug. So they are separate. That's apart and the how this is a tailing lug is another one. Here you have the 3D model of uh, as a PDF. You can send it for your uh, customer. And for example, if you would like to measure uh, something from here, from this tool, you can get a 3D measurement tool and you can measure the distance from here. Let's make a zoom first. So here can like that. And from here, let's 
select the measurement tool from this point to that point. Sorry. Like that. So you have 115 millimeters. Another from here to there. So 310. If you would like to measure the thickness, for example, this is 16 millimeters. So by that way, you can measure the uh, diameters and from the center to the center like that. Okay, so by using the, the you can add the three 3D comments if you would like to add a comment here like clash. And so you can use the 3D model to uh, prepare and comments for the 3D model. And easily you can detect if you have any clashes or not. 